Hey guys, it's the Anti-San here. It's been a while since I've done my own vlog, but you know, I've been pretty busy as of late. Also, I got myself a nifty new haircut. Check it out. I just got it yesterday, so I mean, I definitely feel a lot better, you know, that I got the, the Jufro off of me. Basically, what's been going on is uh, I got myself a new job in uh, technical support a couple towns away. It's It doesn't pay much, but it is full-time, and it is doing something that I'm, you know, fairly good at. It involves computers, so, you know, hey. It's a lot better than, you know, flipping burgers or, you know, being a cashier. Also, since I'm working, I'm making money, which is also a plus. Also, I'm uh, thinking about uh, getting a degree online. Now, of course, there's, you know, universities like the University of Phoenix and this one that's been, you know, bugging me to no end, which is Jones International University. Apparently, I sent them a requested information. I don't I don't quite remember doing that, but they've been bugging me nonetheless. But but instead of, you know, wasting my time doing something like that, I've been thinking about, you know, taking the easy way out and uh, buying a degree online. But wait, Andy, those are all scams. Yeah, probably, but it would still be nice to have, you know, if anything, it's just like a novelty. The main reason I want to buy my degree online is so I can uh, teach English in Japan, because basically that's, that's the main thing that's been holding me back, is the fact that I don't have a four-year degree. I mean, that's pretty much the only requirement in order to teach English in Japan, or to get a visa, a working visa anyway, is to have a four-year degree. It doesn't matter, you know, what the subject could be in, as long as you have that four-year degree. I was thinking about going to a Bowling Green State University and uh, learning some Japanese so that way I could better, you know, communicate with my customers instead of just talking in English all the time. And also, you know, to kind of get myself, you know, around town without, you know, fumbling through, you know, sign language and, you know, gestures, and I want to go here, and shit like that. And plus, you know, I'm just, I'm really interested in the Japanese language. And, you know, I've been watching, you know, a lot of anime, and, you know, I don't, I know what you're going to say, Andy, you can't learn Japanese by watching anime. Well, yeah, that's true. I'm, I mean, I do some learning on the side also. I got some videos and some books and stuff, but I just kind of follow what's going on in anime as, like, you know, examples, more or less. Just kind of like as... You know, to figure out, okay, he says this here and that there. That word means this, and he uses it here, and just kind of dissecting things. And also trying to figure out how, what casual Japanese would be, so I don't end up, you know, talking like a robot when I get to Japan. And, you know, using very gaijin-esque phrases. Gaijin meaning a foreigner. And uh, I've also been watching a lot of uh, foreigners in Japan on YouTube, mostly uh, Tokyo Kuni. He is definitely my favorite vlogger of all time. I mean, not just, you know, guy in Japan vlogging, but just vlogger of all time. I mean, his, his vlogs are not only funny, but they're very, very informative about what it takes to live in Japan and to work in Japan. And just, you know, little nuances and things that they don't quite explain in, in you know, say, like a tourist brochure or something along those lines. Just little Japanisms or whatever. And uh, I've also been watching a couple others. Uh, Tokyo Swan, although he's not in Japan anymore, I've been watching, you know, several of his videos. Uh, Tikio Sam, not my favorite, but he's 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 there for a good laugh. So uh, I occasionally watch Give Me a Break Man, but I kind of feel he's going towards like, you know, the sexy Phil kind of direction where he just is more like Japandering in a sense, kind of. You know, it's not that I hate him, but I just, I just don't like him. <laughs> then there's uh, Lensei, I think that's how you pronounce his name. He, he vlogs on and off, and he also tends, you know, to delete some of his shit, which I I'm not a big fan of. I do not want to delete any of my vlogs. Although, speaking of which, um, I'm kind of debating between something. I've been using, you know, the name The Andy Son for a while. It wasn't my first name. Originally, I went with Andy Son. I found that it's, you know, kind of a search engine nightmare. So I decided to make it a little more unique by adding, you know, the the, the the, <laughs> in front of it, making The Andy Son. So that way you know it's me and not some other Andy Son, or Andy San Dimas, who I heard here it's very very hot so I made a YouTube account called the Andy son I haven't put anything up on it yet but I'm kind of debating between you know just switching to that account and just kind of you know letting the whole Andy son account kind of go I won't delete anything definitely not but just not update anything I'm kind of annoyed by people who account hop but I mean I'm kind of doing it for a, a good reason just because it's better for people to search me through the Andy son instead of Andy son and plus you know if, 
if all else fails, I could just switch back. You know, no big deal. Uh, tell me what you guys think in the comments below, and uh, we'll go from there. I don't really have too much else to talk about because, you know, I don't want to make this vlog, like, really super long. So, um, that's pretty much it. So, uh, I'll see you guys later. This is the Andy Song, signing out. You guys have a great effing day. Hey guys, it's the Andy San here. I want to show you guys my spiffy new apartment. Check it out. Okay, here's my bed. It's full size. It's a big one. There's my desk. It's got my little uh, laptop there. Desktop there. Good luck cat, Pikachu, and Buddha. A bunch of random stuff. Chair. There's my acoustic with socks on top of it. There's my amp back there and the tuner. Got some stuff under the bed. Here's my food. My shoes. ECR TV. Uh, clock and uh, there's my keys. And my new fridge. Actually it's used, but it's new to me. And my closet. Wait, this isn't a closet. It's a mirror door closet. Whoa! Hi! Open the doors. Big fluffy... Okay, you can't see anything. And there's some stuff in there. It's like a pillow, shirts... Yeah, that sort of thing. And let's go to the bathroom. The mirror again! Sink, little table thing, and a shower. Yeah, this is originally for like a handicapped person, so it's got a little like sit down thing. And this is even kind of padded. That's cool. And, like a handheld shower, that sort of thing. And the toilet this is where I make doo doo. My trash can. And that's pretty much it. Oh, although I can show you the uh, the main room. Let's check this out. Ooh, it's so dark. There, it's a little better. Hmm. Try to find another light. Kind of works. Oh, that does. Okay. Mm -hmm. That this looks almost exactly like the big screen TV at my ha I'm at uh, my parents' house, <laughs> except it's just a little bit smaller. And couch and stuff and fridge and all this other stuff. And look, a dishwasher and microwave. And here's something everybody will appreciate: washer and dryer. So my bills won't be super duper sky high. I'm gonna have to turn off the lights again. Oh no. That's not the light turn offer. Here we go. Ooh, it's so scary. Walk to the light. And we're back in my room. Ah, feels so good to be in bullet green. Ah, yeah. This is life. Now, I haven't really been socializing. I really wanted to do that today, but, uh, I don't know, just one, one thing at a time, plus I had to finish doing my room. There's a bunch of stuff that I forgot to do yesterday, so. Yeah, I hope to be, a uh, doing more vlogs of Bowling Green in the future, obviously, and uh, I'm also going to be periodic, also, I'm also going to be uploading uh, some vlogs that I have uh, already edited and everything from uh, when I was still living in Salina, yeah, so be sure to check those out. This is the Andy Song, signing off. You guys have an excellent effing day. Shaka!
Hey guys, it's Andy Son here. I got an email last night from uh, one of my readers. Unfortunately, he's not given me permission to publish it online. What I will do instead is just give you guys the basic overview. In the email, the concerned reader, we'll call him Leo for confidentiality reasons, tells me how following what uh, Tim Ferriss and Steve Pavlina, and especially his wife Erin, write about has made me lose control over my life. Leo lists some examples, although some are more opinionated than factual in my opinion, and then tells me what I should really do to improve my life. He says that I should first and foremost find a job, and then save up to move out, and then continue to work at that job while enjoying my passions on the side. Now I think that's a great idea, there's not too much wrong with that idea, and it goes along with what I've been saying for a long time now, but I don't want my passions to be on the sidelines forever. It's more of a, what he's outlining is more of a, uh, a short-term plan for me. I want to be able to do what I love and make money from doing it. Now I do realize that I can't make a good living for my passions alone right away. I need to improve my skills in order to do that. Whether it be learning to play songs more fluidly on the guitar, improving the quality of my writing and editing, <laughs> or working on better marketing my skills, whether it be online or even offline. Now, I wrote Leo back today, and although it's not quite as long as e his, his email was, I feel confident in my response. And the uh, letter goes, Leo. Thanks for the letter. It was long, yes, but I read it all. Ever since I first read about Tim Ferriss' book, I've also read a lot of criticism about the concept of a four-hour work week. Most critics simply mistake the forest for the trees. They think that only working for four hours a week and maintaining at least a decent standard of living is absurd, and, dis and they dismiss the book as a complete work of quackery. What the four-hour work week's really about is managing your time, not really as a means to work for only four hours a week. He has said in multiple interviews that if you enjoy what you're doing, even if it goes beyond four hours, then it's not a waste of time. Hiring freelancers to redo Spicy Melon, which was, you know, destined to be my second site that would help me earn income, and uh, I've decided to completely nuke it earlier this week, it was a bad idea. But it was a lesson that I had to learn. Although there are a lot of principles in the book, The 4-Hour Workweek, that are unrealistic for me to apply, there is still some value to be had from it. I ignored the first part of the book, which goes through defining what you want and what you'll do with all your free time if you were only working four hours a week, a week or a little more. And I skipped right to the monetization part. I pretty much put the cart before the horse. That was, you know, my main problem with Spicy Melon and with a couple other online ventures. I thought that if I quit my job at Walmart, then everything would fall into place. Instead of working, I would be writing and marketing my blog. For a while, it was actually working. However, without a large enough income to support myself and my savings dwindling, I began to get depressed and my writing slowed to practically a halt this year. I mean, I've only written like a handful of posts this year. And where are we at? Like May? <laughs> it's ridiculous. I did manage to get a job in February, however, but it only lasted a month and a half because I wasn't quote-unquote getting it, according to my supervisor and I've been out of a job since. I first read about Steve Pavlina when I was looking up how to monetize my blog. I've been linking to his posts so much that my friends often give me crap about it. I do agree that he likes to tell people what they want to hear, but is that really so wrong? The difference between my stepdad bitching about my lack of a job and Steve encouraging me, albeit indirectly, to follow my passion is incomparable. Even today, I would rather follow my passion than just give up and work a job that I hate. When I first decided to follow my heart, so to speak, and to shed the need for having a regular boring job, I put the cart before the horse again. I believe that if I focused on nothing but my passion for writing, that my writing would improve and that my life would fall into place for me. As I've mentioned before, my writing began to suffer when I focused on it exclusively. I realized that I didn't have enough experience with my passions to monetize them right out the gate. And I still don't. Also, I know that I don't just want to write. There are several things that I enjoy doing, like watching anime, reading manga, learning Japanese, listening to all kinds of music, and playing guitar. I also shouldn't try to get passionate about something just for money, like I did with Spicy Melon. Although I'm kind of interested in uh, cooking, it, I'm not really passionate enough to like make an entire site about it, which is another reason why it failed. I do, however, realize that I need a job of some kind in order to survive in today's world. It's 
Just a fact of life, really. I need it to pay the bills until I'm able to do so with my passions alone. I don't think that it's impossible to do, but it will take a lot of hard work and dedication to be able to make a living doing what I love. I do admit that I might not be able to reach that point in my lifetime, but I'll continue to pursue it regardless. Why? Because it's the only thing that really feels right to me. And if I happen to die today, then I can at least say I tried. And honestly, how many people out there in the working force can say that? So today, after I get done recording this vlog, I will call to follow up on my job applications and then go out to apply for more jobs. I'll continue to do that every day until I land a job. Once again, Leo, thanks for the email, and I hope that we can stay in touch. The Andy Sound. There was a lot more to the email than just what I covered, but that was just like the basic gist of it. Once again, Leo, thanks for the email. And uh, if any of you guys out there want to send me an email, either of encouragement or tips or what have you, the link to my email is on my site. Um, this is Andy Sun out, and I hope you guys have a great day. Now to see. Hey guys, this is Johnny Diff and Andy Sun heading back from fucking Toledo. Fucking checking out some apartments and shit, all sorts of shit. Things getting kicked out or whatever, which is bullshit, by the way. It is. But, uh, Shot on 75, fucking on the highway, listening to Avenged Sevenfold and shit. Um, just fucking chilling, basically. The apartment was pretty fucking tits, wasn't it? Oh yeah. It was fucking tits. It was straight tits. <laughs> fucking has like a pool, a fitness center, computers, and all sorts of shit. And fucking right by Bowling Green University. Oh, it's just fucking sweet as fuck.
grants to uh, cover for my uh, living expenses, or at least for most of them, so that way I don't have to work. Ideally, I, I don't want to work while I'm going to school full time. Because he's lazy. Oh yeah. That's true. You're lazy, the Americans. Yeah. You're scums. And if I don't have to, then you know why not. So, yeah, but most likely I'll probably have to work at least part time. At least for like extra money, something. But until I actually get into uh, at least community college, I'm just gonna live off my unemployment. That's how I'm gonna be uh, paying rent, living expenses, all that shit. And uh, try to look for a job in the area. There's like a shit ton of places. I mean, fuck, I could, you know, work at McDonald's again. McDonald's! Yeah, we're gonna be working at McDonald's. I mean, I really wouldn't care too much. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, they also said that. Uh, yeah. Uh, be it. Uh, the whole videos. She actually fucking paid attention and learned it. Because I hit all my acoustic because my fucking strat was all fucked up. Which I got fixed, by the way. So we're gonna fucking record some shit before Andy leaves. So, because he has a camera. So, I made by my own. It's not much enough for him. It's camera time. Yeah. But, be alright. We'll fucking show some shit. Me jamming and shit. And AI, I am getting a Schecter C1 Floyd Rose fucking amazing guitar fucking coming up first of the month when I get my check so that's gonna be pretty a lot of videos probably me fucking jamming on that shit oh yeah but um I'm gonna be moving out June 1st June 1st should be mentioning that that's also when I'm off my probation so look out ladies <laughs> coming off yeah, probation it's coming to get ya coming to get ya yeah nah, it's all good dude uh I'll probably be doing some videos about I got my Randall. I haven't shown any videos of that yet. I got Randall half stack. Andy showed a video of it, but yeah. Yeah, that's alright. I mean, I'll play it right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a, it's a musical prodigy. Uh, that's about it for me, man. I'm just chilling on 75. Yeah. I can get back on the time for fucking work. Yeah. Yeah, you, you might be able to. But yeah. Basically, a couple details before we get going is, uh, like I said, I'll be moving in June 1st. I'll probably get some of my shit in there before then, but I'll actually be there June 1st. Oh well, yeah, donations are definitely acceptable. You can fucking send me money, dude. That's definitely yeah. acceptable. Or me, because I kind of need that. <laughs> but, um, so, June 1st is when I'm moving in. Um, since I don't really have reliable internet, at least internet powerful enough to uh, send out YouTube videos, this video and, a bu and uh, all the videos that we're going to be recording will uh, probably show up on YouTube around uh, June 1st. I'll put them up like one at a time or whatever. So, I also uh, did a vlog a while back about the uh, about one of my posts, but because my internet was being a total bitch, it wouldn't let me. Uh, Riage. Yeah, it's like it would get up to like 98% and then unknown error occurred. Unknown error. Internet. I don't have, you know, I can't plug in my internet anymore. It's, it's Rogers the jackass. Yeah, yeah, it's her stepdad. He's a jackass. Totally. But hey, June 1st, I'm moving out, so I won't really have to deal with him too much longer. The only thing I wouldn't have to deal with him is uh, the storage of my stuff, which after I get a job, I won't even have to deal with him for that. So I'll just put all my, all my shit in storage. That's about it, so, uh, see you guys on the flip side. Peace out, y'all! Yeah. Peace out! Peace up! Hey, guys. Hey, guys, it's the Andy Son here at the, uh, new dog park. <laughs> I'm just running around. And we got our two dogs. That's right, two dogs. Wait. They're two dogs. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> those dogs. <laughs> Lita's actually getting along. Yeah, that's right, we got Lito back. I forgot to do, a, do an update on that. Look at him. Yeah, speaker boy. 
Look at that. Look at that. Look at all the doggies. It's okay, Zeus. It's okay. <laughs> Hello. Look at all the doggies. <laughs> oh, it's like they came out of nowhere. It's like there's like nobody here. Now. All of a sudden, it's like whoosh. It's like I smell new dogs. <laughs> oh, he's cool. Oh, they're actually getting along pretty well. Hey, and everybody's really paying attention to Lido. He's like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> uh, let's go see what's going on. This is like, oh man, they're all sick of my butt. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Got Look at all the doggies. <laughs> He's got posse now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Look at all the doggies. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Oh, Barney, sorry. That's okay. okay. <laughs> hey, Lido. Hey, hey. Aren't you so happy? Yeah. <laughs> go check out the rocks. What? Yeah. Come on, guys. Let's go, let's go check out the rocks. Look at go. <laughs> <laughs> really should have brought a ball. Hey, yo. Check out the rocks. And this is great, dude. Oh yeah, this is definitely good. Look at the dogs, man. Yeah. That time too. Oh, check out the rocks. And check out like this is truly like a big dog park. I mean, look how yeah. friggin' huge the place is. This is look at this. And I'm really glad that both Zeus and Leto are getting along with the other dogs. Yeah. Look at the rocks! What's that all about? <laughs> yeah. What's that all about? He's gonna pee all over that. Oh yeah. <laughs> They're all like, yeah, hey, I'm peeing all over. Uh, He's like, hey, I'm gonna pee on this too, man. Oh, uh, and if they crap, they got dog bags over there. Yeah. Way off. In the distance, hey, I'm gonna so. crap. Oh, I'm gonna pee too. This sounds like a good piece. <laughs> Once Zeus pees, like, hey, everyone, everyone pee over here, man. Yeah. Yeah, what's going on, man? <laughs> Oh, there, there's an idea. Oh, you got sticks. We well, got sticks. Oh, oh yeah. There he comes. Yeah. And there he goes. He's getting the stick. There you go. There you go. There you go. She's going to pee. She's <laughs> coming. She's like, I'm kind of busy right now, guys. <laughs> She's sitting or peeing? <laughs> Just kind of like stopped after a while. Yeah. Yo, boy, Zeusy. He's got the stick. Look at him. Hey, baby girl. I got this. It's a Yeah. I love you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for taking me to this park. All right. Well, as you can see, both dogs are having a good old time here at the dog park. So, this is Andy San signing off for now. You guys have a great day. It's the new cow spa coming in. It's not going to take up that much room. I guess mom was right.
Gosh. I don't know if you want to push it all the way. Hmm. Okay, that's enough. There's a hot dog. And I'm done. Hey guys, it's Andy Son here doing a quick little vlog. Uh, it's just basically a, a tour of my basement before I uh, go to Bowling Green. This is my last day here and uh, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little tour of the basement. And we're gonna start from the tippy top. Notice it's all bright up here. Alright, check this out. You got stairs and just the beginning of the wall of boredom that my mom painted when she was really really bored. There's my newly acquired mini fridge which was given to me by my parents. There's my big shadow. Let's see what's inside. Uh, some pop, water, my collection of waters, and a Capri Sun. A saw, that's not mine, treadmill, old radio that we used to have like back when we lived in... Yeah, I think that's the radio we had back when we lived in Michigan. Lamp, workout equipment that's hardly ever used, stuff, uh, scale. Let's see how fat I am. I am 215 pounds. Fuck me running. In fact, I should be running. Jesus. Water softener, water, uh, you know. <laughs> Drum set. It's pretty nice. We should have done videos on it, but eh, we're more guitar people than drum people. This is our stepdads. These are the real drums, electronic drums, a little drum amp, a little stereo so you can, you know, drum to songs, like a little TV thing set up for like drum tutorials. Sticks and heads on the ab lounger, which is never ever used, ever. A little workout bike that's never used. Yeah, you'd think with all this workout equipment, we'd be like the most fit people in the world. Not really. Anyway, moving on. We got my little rig set up. A uh, little PV amp right here is right, my little youngest brother's amp. That's mine. Little Johnson no-name amp with my Korg tuner on top, Behringer Ultra Chorus, Chorus Pedal, uh, my Digitech Pedal Master. I got those wired in and my Tube Screamer off to the side because I don't have an AC adapter for it because it broke. Here's John's stuff. He also has a Tube Screamer, but his is hooked in. His is wah. It's unhooked. Channel switcher, his Strat, and his Randall amp with his Korg tuner on top. And some books. And then we got a little, like, a uh, wood table full of stuff. Old cameras. And here's my desk. Well, th this technically isn't my desk. This is where I keep all my clothes. See, you got like underwear and socks on top, a pair of pants up here too. This is where my camera sits and my camera battery. Looking inside, you can't see shit, but there's clothes in here. Well, I can see some clothes. And a little outline of the new Genshin shirt. Give you guys a little preview of that. There's a new Genshin shirt. This is apparently Genshin you used new mascot. Um, I just threw out the name Ichigo Chan. Totally original, right? <laughs> There's the logo, which has been returned to in its entirety that I designed. They just kind of redid the letters so they're bigger. And it's got a quote from uh, L from Death Note on the back. I'll give you the strawberry if you keep it a secret. Got a little thing where I keep my socks and my scrubber pants. This is my big fuzzy pillow. It is nice. It's also got like hoodies, my little uh, baskets, and some playboys. And we got my chair, which I'm not bringing with me. And this is my desk. Look how clean it is. It is so clean and immaculate. Mmm, look at all that no dust. Yeah. Got my desktop computer, my can of WD-40 with my can of air, calculator, game controller, uh, there's a printer and some figures, a phone, old school iPod, Grip Master, and my external hard drive which has currently taken a crap on me. I'll get that fixed eventually so I can get all my music and shit off. My MP3 player which is over a mile long according to Walmart, Mints, my super awesome Microsoft mouse from hell which has seen days. My bitchin', like 14 inch monitor I think. And here's a neat little thing that came with the desk. It's a, it's a bookshelf kind of thing. It's only got, you know, three things, three shelves. But it holds my guitar magazines, Guitar World, which is my favorite. Um, I didn't like Guitar Player as much, honestly. Got Shonen Jumps, got the newest one with the Ultimo, which is like a 
manga made by Stan Lee. It's, it's okay, I guess, for now. Got a Japanese English dictionary right there. You can't really see it. An old issue of Total Guitar Magazine that I got. Only got that because it had Master of Puppets tab that was written correctly. And a Rolling Stone Magic Deck. Magic the Gathering Deck. My video games. Nintendo DS. Game Boy games. Game Boy Mates SP. Uh, a bunch of crap that I got from Eric, uh, my old textbooks, and stuff like that. And I was trying to sell all these magazines on eBay, but I'm just too damn lazy to get them up there. Stereo system that never got installed. My prepaid legal stuff, which I'm supposed to get a refund for that soon. And here are the guitar straps from the guitars that I had to unfortunately sell. Here's where I keep all my DVDs. Ta-da! DVDs. That's pretty much it. Uh, more magazines in these two little bins. Um, you got my Dean Acoustic right here, and my K Les Paul copy here. Got a bunch of old stuff. There's photo albums. Those are old school photo albums. A uh, bunch of stuff here. Here's a picture of Owen Hart that I did like when I was in seventh grade. <laughs> I was so particular about his uh, about his uh, skin color that I completely screwed up the look of everything, so he looks all goofy. Plus, I was in like seventh grade, so yeah. Sorry if Owen looks all goofy. That was like just when he died at Over the Edge in '99. I actually, it would have been in 8th grade, my bad. This is an, a thing that my mom did, but it's upside down right now. It's a picture of a tiger. It's really nicely done. Glass case, headphone extension cord, and uh, DVDs of Comic Party. The first season, not Revolution. Just watching the first season of Comic Party. Getting to Revolution. A bunch of crap stuff in my bed. Pretty nondescript. Got several layers. You got the one blanket. Or one comforter, two comforter, sheets, pillow, and the little under thing under that. Couch with a shit ton of towels on it. The two elongated chair, whatever, I don't know what they're called. It's got suede on it, it's kind of nice, but if you sit on certain parts it hurts. This is the little stand-up cooler where I keep my laptop. So it's not here, it's upstairs right now. Xbox 360, it's not working. Controllers, PS2 was there. Surround sound system, that kind of works. Clock. Big screen TV, Toshiba by the way. Old school systems, phone that's not working right now. And the most interesting part of the house, the sub pump. Hmm, that is interesting. Also a dehumidifier, which is pretty useless down here since it's not very humid down here at all. And you got a nice leather couch, which I was gonna get when I moved out, but since the apartment I'm moving is completely furnished, it's kind of pointless. Yeah, this couch is really nice. The only problem is it can get really, really cold, and there's little, like, scratches and stuff from our dog Zeus when he was a puppy. And, uh, leather recliner, which is a complete piece of crap. And we got a dresser here, made of metal. This thing is old as fuck. And some other stuff. And we're back at our desk, my desk again. Some boxes. And that's pretty much it. Wow. For a short video, this sure lasted a long time. Well, this is the Andy Salon signing off. Hope to see you at BG. Bye. Hey guys, it's the Andy Salon here. Sorry if I look bluer than normal. I just can't get the white balance to work today on the camera. So, but I don't mind. I like blue. So, I just wanted to give you guys a quick little uh, retour of my room. I recently redid some things from the last apartment tour video. Uh, so, let's get started. Okay, first up is the doorway. I, a couple weeks ago I got a new wall scroll of Saber from the anime Face Day Night, which uh, I expected to be as big as my Ray wall scroll, but that didn't quite happen. So needless to say I was a little disappointed, but I kind of got over it and was looking for a new place to put it, and I eventually settled on the door, which I think works pretty well actually. and. Uh, if you're wondering, no, the wall scroll doesn't really move that much when I'm opening and closing the door. Even when I'm slamming it, it only kind of ruffles a little bit. And, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, you might remember my box of food. That is, uh, no more. I re it's, uh, I'm using it for storage, storing stuff in my closet now. So the box itself isn't gone, but it has no food. This is my, uh, little, is it four, little seven drawer thing that I got from Walmart for about, I think it was like 34, 36 bucks. Maybe it was 32, I don't quite remember. But it's pretty convenient. See, I store most of my food in the bottom three drawers. 
would actually be the top and the bottom drawers where I store my food. And my plates and stuff are in the middle bottom drawer. And then I get, keep my mail right here. Then this is where I keep like my sleeping mask. See, that's my old sleeping mask. I recently got a new one today, actually, called the Sleep Master. I don't know if you can see that here. It's kind of still in the bag. I only strapped it on like a couple minutes ago to kind of test it out, but I have yet to actually, you know, sleep a whole night in it. So, taking that over when I go over to my parents' house to give that a little spin or whatever. There's my earplugs and some random stuff. Like a bouncy ball. <laughs> and in here is like coupons and picks and other assorted things. And here's where I keep all my silverware. And up here is the little guitar gig bag book thing, which shows every scale, arpeggio, and chord in every key, except for Lydian. I don't know why. And if you're wondering where I keep the money for my new guitar, it is here in my jar of money. But I will soon move it, so for potential thefts, um, that will not be there. And the keys and stuff. And here's my mirrored door closet. Whoa. <laughs> anyway, um, there's my first wall scroll of uh, Ray Ayanami from Neon Genesis Evangelion, or Ava as I like to call it. Um, I was expecting the Saber wall scroll to be that big, but as you can see, it is not. See if I can get a shot of both of them in here. See, there's the Ray one. There's the Saber one. See, they're significantly smaller. And uh, that's pretty much it as far as like major changes. Oh, I did bring my bike inside, just because it's getting near that time where all the uh, you know college kids are coming back. So I don't want people totally fucking with my bike. So I decided to just, you know, bring it inside. It's out in the living room. Nobody really does anything in the living room. They just, they're either out working or with friends, or if they do decide to come home, then they just go straight to the bedroom. Just like a certain somebody. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, in one of my previous uh, posts, I believe it was uh, either last week's or the week before is a Deja Vu's day, I talked about having a goal board, which uh, was inspired by one of Steve Pavlina's videos, which uh, he himself did not do, but he was on, it was like a raw food, like vlog thing, started by somebody else, uh, I'll put the link in the sidebar if you guys want to see it, he actually did two videos, where he kind of gives a tour of his house, and he shows the goal board in there, and he talks about, uh, I think like manifesting intentions or something, something along those lines, his wife Aaron's there too, so, um, but basically his goal board is a, uh, a two by three thing of uh, various little goals that he does. They're not anything, you know, particularly fancy. As far as you know, the writing isn't particularly intricate or anything like that, but I kind of did the same thing with mine, but I'm actually thinking about retooling it just to kind of change things up a bit, but I'll let you guys have a little looky look. Okay. That one over there says I have $1,337 worth of value to others and am rewarded accordingly. I don't know, I just decided to throw a figure out there. Then, I am grateful for owning a PV Viper 75. I am in a relationship with a beautiful woman. And this one, which as many of my followers on Twitter and on Facebook might recognize, I am the proud owner of a Paul Reed Smith SE Custom 24 in whale blue which uh, I am currently 14.9% away, or I have 14.9% saved up, I should say. And then this one, I weigh 180 pounds, which is currently collecting dust right now, as I now currently weigh 212 pounds. So yeah, I really should uh, exercise more. And this one is, uh, I can't show everything, just because uh, it lists some uh, band members or potential band member candidates that uh, I haven't really talked to about it. So just for confidentiality reasons, I can't show the whole thing. So it basically says, I'm the front man for my band Chrome Sparks as the lead vocalist, rhythm guitarist with blank on lead guitar, backup vocals, slash screams. 
blank on drums, and blankety blank on bass slash backup vocals. So, I'd like to show you, but A, that would spoil the surprise, and B, I'm not sure if they'll even agree to it. And also C, they might not want their privacy uh, compromised. <laughs> For the 80 to 100 people that view this video, so, yeah. I'm going to my parents for this weekend, so I won't be twittering or doing anything of that sort for uh, Friday through Saturday. Although I do plan on uh, getting back probably late Saturday. Well, late to me. Right around like 10-ish. 9, 10-ish. So I might be twittering then. But for the rest of the day and uh, most of tomorrow, I'll be over at my parents, so... Yeah! Um, let's see, what else should I talk about? Um, oh yeah, my, uh, like, as I said in the goal board, my band Chrome Sparks is, uh, beginning to form. I'm actually kind of focusing right now on just making it like a one-man band, a la Owl City. Just so that way I have some material to work on, just in case I either can't find anybody, or can't find the right people to work with, or... Whatever, you know, you know how that goes for people that are in bands. You know, they got work schedules, they got school schedules, and you gotta work all the way around all these, like, four different people's schedules, and it's just, it, it can be a bit, a bit of a hassle. I guess that's one of the reasons why power trios were so successful. Not just sonically, but, uh, I guess, uh, schedule-wise. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, this is Andy Son signing off for now. You guys have an excellent day, and oh yeah, I just remembered, I'm going to be uh, filming a couple videos of uh, some of the Chrome Sparks riff ideas that I put up on our MySpace page, so uh, be sure to check those out, and uh, like I said before, this is Andy San, signing off, and you guys have an excellent day. See ya! Hey guys, it's Andy San here. Um, I have some kind of sad news to say. Um, I'm getting kicked out of my apartment. Um, basically what's going on is I didn't technically sign the official agreement to become a subleaser, so through some technical just difficulties, I wasn't officially a subleaser here. So management found out after um, one of my new roommates, or former new roommates. Um, see, apparently this is an all this is an all girls apartment, or is supposed to be, not a co-ed. And uh, the one roommate that, I'm gonna, that I was going to be getting, her dad was uh, uncomfortable with a guy living here. So he raised a bit of a stink at the office and uh, pulled up the file. And it turns out that I didn't officially uh, sign over the agreement. I just sent in an application. But because I didn't have a guarantor, it never got officially filed. And I was living here, not really illegally, but just I wasn't supposed to be here even though I paid my rent on time throughout the three months. So, Ariopolis uh, and I went over and uh, discussed some possible living arrangements here, but I would have to put up about 930 bucks in order to get an apartment that wouldn't be by myself. I had to be living with three other guys. And on top of that, next month I'd have to pay them like 270 something And it would just keep on going like that. So, uh, because I don't have quite that much money saved up, um, I'm going to have to be uh, vacating the premises soon. I'm just uh, going to do a quick little vloggy vo vlog before I go, just to kind of give a little look around before I start uh, tearing stuff down. So, uh, here's one final look at my very first apartment. Uh, as you see, got my desktop there. It's a lot card there with the number of the Enclave dude who kicked me out, handed me his card. He was real nice about it, and I kind of understood, you know, what if something happened to me and the Enclave would be responsible. There's my cell phone, so the big desktop monitor and the keyboard in the back, the laptop, and all this other stuff. Here's my uh, current goal board. I changed things up a bit. That's still the same. The I deliver. You know, 1337, worth the value to others and reward accordingly. Grateful owning the PB5 for 75. In relationship with a beautiful woman. And instead of owning the PRS, I'll be owning an Epiphone Wilshire with a bunch of uh, different mods. Like Seymour Duncan P-Rails, Humbucker set in white. 
uh, Shadow Kill Pot for the Master Volume. Two three-way switches that will replace the uh, one of the volumes and uh, one of and uh, one of the tones. And with a PRS Master Tone push-pull pot, which I was kind of dangling between doing like a uh, reverse polarity thing, kind of get like a Peter Green sound. With a Grover Mini rotor tuners, if they don't already have Grovers, I didn't really check. And a Graftech tusk, saddle nut, and stop tail piece. Um, I was thinking about getting a Dunlop strap locks, but I think that might be a bit excessive. And if it's not, then I'll just get them, whatever. And of course, they weigh 180 pounds, which is kind of bullshit right now. And uh, the Chrome Sparks one, which before I listed down a bunch of other uh, people, but for now, I am the main producer, singer, songwriter, and instrumentalist for my band, Chrome Sparks. Um, yeah, that's kind of taking a hiatus right now because of the whole getting kicked out thing. Here is my thing of food. Has all my food and mail and stuff. There's my jar of money. And uh, my Nintendo DS. Mints. PC. Uh, there's my funky clock. That looks all weird. It's actually 7-Eleven, despite what... You know, the changes might say. VCR, yeah, I know, I'm living in the 90s. TV, fridge, my nice full size bed, which I will never get to sleep on again ever, unfortunately. Big fluffy pillow, which you can see now. It's actually like a purplish color. It looks black, but it's actually purple. There's mom's tiger painting. Thing of Ray Ainami. Thing of uh, Saber from Fate Stay Night. And there's my faded mirror door closet. I'm so sad that I'm going to be leaving it. I'm actually trying not to cry right now, really. And uh, here's my handicap shower, where I switched over to a uh, bar soap instead of the uh, like body wash. Trash, toilet, towels, and TP and stuff. There's my mirror. Uh, and bottles of water. Oh yeah, I better start get packing. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing is kind of chilling over at Areopolis's for a bit while I make some phone calls and try to get myself uh, my own apartment. Um, legally this time, I'm not going to go through, you know, a bullshit thing. So, um, yeah. Uh, note to self. It's not that I'm saying not to trust Craigslist or anything like that, but um, just... You know, try to be reasonable about things. So, um, yeah. This is the Andy Son signing off. Um, I hope you guys are having a better day than I am. I uh, I don't really view this as a bad thing. I just view this as kind of a a changing of pace. Ironically enough, in the local paper, I was just browsing around the horoscopes because I was kind of bored at work yesterday. And I found that uh, alternate living arrangements are in my future. It will definitely break me out of my depression and all that other fun stuff. So, I don't know if it's broken me out of my depression, but it's definitely uh, changed things up a little bit. Not necessarily for the better, though, but whatever. So, anyway, this is the Andy Son for the last time in my apartment. I'm doing my last vloggy vlog here. And I uh, hope you guys are having a, a better day than I am. And I hope to see you soon, hopefully from my uh, new apartment. So, bye-bye for now. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Hey guys, it's Andy Son here. I just wanted to give you a little, yet another quick tour of my apartment, but this time, it's all bare bones. I finally drug the last piece of it out, which was the, the fridge. So, pardon me if I'm a little winded. But yeah, take a look at the bare apartment. No wall scroll, no sheets. There's the mirror door closet. But there's nothing inside. There's the door. Nothing on the wall, or the door, or the wall. Nothing inside. There is something in the toilet. My little present for me to them in the mirror. Yeah, I'm wearing the same shirt as I was the other day. But yeah. And no, that's not spooge, that is a soap.
So yeah, that is my completely empty apartment. What I'm gonna do right now is go to Cashland, get a extra hundred bucks, then go to the U-Haul place, get a U-Haul, bring it back here, haul the stuff up, haul up all the stuff up here, and uh, let's see by that time, Dairy Queen should be open. So I'll just uh, tell my boss that I have to uh, skip town. And uh, I'll be up on a Friday to pick up my check, as much of a dick as that sounds. You know, it's kind of what it's come down to. So, um, I highly doubt this vlog will be shown until I am safe back at home and or with proper internet. But I'm just doing it as kind of a, uh, just a little, like, memory of me being here in my very first apartment. I mean, I was here for a good three months. And, you know, I was really making it on my own, and I, get, I gotta be honest, I didn't really get much sleep last night, you know, just sitting there thinking of it, but I eventually calmed down, maybe got a couple couple hours of sleep, so I'm kind of running a little low, I'm just kind of running on adrenaline right now, I can't even speak right. <laughs> so yeah, one last look around the old apartment. One last kind of depressing look. There's the mirror door closet, uh, the window, which is bright as fuck. There's my car, and my chair, my desk where I spent most of my time, and the bed, which is super friggin' comfy, and the toilet where I made doo doo. Okay, I guess that's enough of the whole depressing shtick. So, um, I hope to, you know, be making more vlogs and getting on the interwebs, you know, when I get back to my parents' house, but, you know, I can't really say for sure. So, um, this is the Andy Son signing off for the last time here at the Enclave 2 in Bowling Green, Ohio. Hope to see you uh, guys again from uh, Salina, Ohio. So, you guys have a good day. Bye. Hey guys, it's Andy Son here coming at you from Salina, Ohio. As some of you readers of my blog may know, I recently had to move from my Bowling Green apartment to back home because of a uh, subleasing issue. I don't really want to get into it, but um, yeah, basically I had to move back. And uh, so I'm sure some of you are wondering, you know, what's going to happen to the old Andy Son? What are his plans? What's he going to be up to? And uh, basically I went over different scenarios and different plans in my head and even tweeted some of them and maybe blogged about a couple of them, but basically what I'm going to be doing is uh, trying to get a job here in Salina in order to uh, help me save up for an apartment faster. While I'm saving up, I'm just going to be looking for a new apartment in uh, Findlay, Ohio. Yeah, I'm not moving back to Bowling Green. Not that I have anything against Bowling Green. It's just I feel like I pretty much did our, what I already wanted to do there, even though I wanted to go to school there and everything. I don't know, it just didn't really turn out for me. Basically what I'm going to be doing is trying to get an apartment in Finley. And uh, starting uh, beginning of this coming year, 2010, I'm going to try to get back into college. First by going to uh, Owens Community College because my uh, GPA is just a hair under uh, 2.0. I can't go to uh, any other college except for a community college. So basically what I'm going to be doing is going to Owens Community College online. I heard that there's a couple of majors and stuff that you can get online. What I'll be doing is getting a major completely online, uh, just finishing out an associate's degree, which is a two-year program. Once I have that done, I'll transfer to uh, another university. I, I was thinking about going to BGSU, but after reviewing a couple things, I don't know, I don't really think it's for me. So I'm thinking about going to uh, either the University of Finley or to uh, Ohio Northern, which would be uh, in Ada, which is close to Lima, which I think is where my brother's going. I'm not really sure. He didn't really say. But anyway, I'll be going there, either at Ohio Northern or uh, University of Finley, and uh, finishing out my uh, four-year degree. And uh, after that, I plan on going to Japan, either after that or during that, I should say, 
I plan on going to Japan. I want to try to get my uh, MBA, which is a Master's of Biz Business Administration, in Japan. There's a couple of universities I looked up online where you can get it, but I just have to uh, kind of sift through some things before I do that. I might not even get my Master's. I'm not really sure yet. I'm kind of, you know... <laughs> thinking a little bit too ahead here but yeah that's basically kind of my game plan for now is to get my associate's degree from Owens get my uh, bachelor's from either University of Finley or uh, Ohio Northern and either during that time or after that time of getting my bachelor's go to Japan as either a transfer student or as a full-fledged English teacher courtesy of the JET program and uh, possibly get my master's there. I want to try to get some kind of degree from Japan because I think an international degree will just look terrific on a resume especially from Japan considering how uh, tough they are academically speaking so yeah that's basically a quick little rundown of my plans. Um, I plan on vlogging more now that I'm here and have fairly decent internet for the time being. I'm not really sure how my stepdad will feel about me taking his internet and stuff because he might find out I don't know whatever so yeah oh oh one more thing before I go September the 2nd marks the uh, one-year anniversary of me receiving my San Diego's Acti camera expect a uh, first year anniversary uh, vlog about that and also uh, my plans for the future of uh, vlogging on YouTube this is the Andy San signing off for now wishing you guys an excellent day so, yeah Guess what, kids? It's been a whole year since I received my San Zacti camera. Oh, yeah. In that time, I've definitely made a lot of videos. A lot of them bad, uh, a couple of them good, or at least somewhat tolerable. I know some of you are wondering, you know, what I plan to do for uh, my vlogging in the future. And I have uh, two definite plans set out. The first one is to get a new camera. The thing is, since I've been vlogging for about a year now, I think that it's, you know, about high time I get myself a new setup. And I'll definitely keep this camera around as like a backup, just because I don't think it would do well on eBay because the uh, tripod mount is stripped. Some people might not like that. Me, I've found ways to get around it by putting it in different little setups. Like uh, a lot of times I set it up in like a bowl or something, so it's all propped up. I'll have to show you guys that sometime. Yeah, I want to get myself a new camera, and uh, the camera that I have my eye on right now is the uh, the new San Zacti. So, um won't be leaving the, the uh, Sanyo family at all. Um, the one I'm going to be getting is, uh, if I remember the, uh, the lettering right, um, it's the Sanyo Zacti TH6 or THD6, I can't quite remember. Um, it's basically the traditional camcorder setup. Not that I have anything against the, uh, the pistol style setup that Sanyo Zacti is famous for. It's just that it definitely has a lot of limitations. Like, uh, for instance, if I wanted to sit it down without a tripod or anything like that, it would lay like this, so, <laughs> or it'd be all like cockeyed and crooked like this. I uh, definitely can't have that. But it is great for, you know, just vlogging or getting a good close-up on my face. <laughs> but other than that, it, it's very limited in its uh, functionality, so I wanted to get the traditional style. Even though it's uh, a bit bigger than this, be a bit heftier to put in my pocket and that sort of thing. But I like it because you can sit it down without the use of a tripod and uh, just record something like there's a lot of times when you know when, when I was living in BG that I went to Guitar Center and uh, I, could, I wanted to record something but I really couldn't just uh, not just because of noise or whatever but because I couldn't set up the camera correctly because you know the tripod mount is stripped and I can't you know shove a little tripod in there and just set it up and because of the camera's design I couldn't just prop it up or anything like that and uh, if I had a bit of more traditional styled setup then that wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to be getting the San Diego Zac DTH or THD6. Um, it's the traditional style setup, and it, of course, it's going to be in blue because blue is my favorite color. Those run generally around uh, from 200 to 230. I've seen some of them go as high as uh, 250, but you get a bunch of extras if you pay that much, like like a memory card, uh, a case, maybe an extra battery or something. So um, it's generally not considered a bad deal or anything. Yeah, they have a, uh, a waterproof version of that too. I'm not going to be getting that. It'd be kind of nice to have it just for like the novelty, but if I would get a waterproof camcorder, I'll probably just get one of the older Sanyo Zacti ones. 
The second part of my uh, vlogging plans are to uh, do something similar to what uh, Charles Trippi and Shay Carl are doing. I know a couple other uh, YouTube vloggers are doing the same thing too, but those are the two ones that uh, come to mind. Basically what I'm going to try to do is uh, vlog ev uh, once a day every day, um, starting from my birthday, which is uh, December 7th, to the following birthday. So it'd be from December 7th, 2009 to December 7th, 2010. Just as kind of an experiment. I know it's a bit of a long-term experiment, but I think it will be uh, kind of interesting to see, you know, what comes of it. And uh, definitely a lot of interesting things have come from just me vlogging sporadically. But yeah, I want to do like a daily vlog. And mine won't be quite as long as Charles Trippy's unless I'm doing something really you know, spectacular or special or something. Yeah, originally I was kind of against the idea just because I thought, you know, well, my life's not really that interesting and there's not really a whole lot that I can do around here. I mean, at least with Charles, you know, he's in Florida and he can visit all the cool stores and visit all the nice places and he's got money to travel around if he wants to. Um, I don't know where he gets it, but whatever. And uh, I don't quite have that kind of money. I mean, the most I get from the internet is just a uh, little over 30 bucks a month, which uh, is definitely not bad. I'm not, not complaining about that at all. I'm just saying it's not really considered a uh, an adequate traveling budget, because I think the most I would get would be like a full tank of gas and maybe a, a meal or two, or just like a couple Milky Ways or something. Um, so what I would like for you guys to do would be to uh, visit the donation page on the com, and I know I hate sounding like, you know, an internet beggar. You know, I really want to uh, travel and do a lot of vlogging about traveling. It would be really uh, beneficial if I would be able to collect some donations just because I don't really have an income at this time. And I did apply for unemployment, but I haven't really gotten anything yet. And when I do, unemployment's not really going to be that much. Uh, what I want to do for my uh, daily vlogging would be to you know, travel. I don't necessarily have to go very far, just out of Salina, I guess. Visit different shops, uh, different landmarks, that sort of thing, and just vlog there. And, you know, I'd really like to do a traveling vlog. Just that way you guys, you don't have the means to, you know, go out there and see parts of the world for whatever reason. You know, I'd like to be able to give you guys a window into that so you can see what's out there. It definitely won't be in super duper high definition or anything like that, which I think is good because then you'll be able to get to see the real whatever, not through a bunch of, you know, glossed over lenses and things like that. I think that's really good. But yeah, uh, those are my uh, two basic plans for uh, my uh, future vlogging would be to get a new camera, which would be the Sanus Act TH or THD uh, 6, which is a traditional style camcorder in blue, of course, and also uh, doing a daily vlog. And uh, uh, kind of the third thing would be to uh, be able to travel while I'm vlogging. That kind of goes a, a bit hand in hand with my daily vlogging. We'd get you know money to travel around, visit different places, that sort of thing. I'm gonna try to get this vlog up as uh, soon as I can, but because my stepdad may or may not be here soon, I don't really know how it's gonna go. So I'm gonna try to edit it as quick as I can and uh, upload it as quick as I can. So um, this is Andy San signing off for now. Thanking you guys for uh, all of your comments and all of your views. Here's one year down, and here's to many more. See ya. Hey guys, it's Danny San here. Yeah, if I'm looking a little redder than normal, it's because it's hot as fucking hell in here. And uh, basically what I'm going to be doing is uh, going up to uh, Bowling Green to pick up my last two checks from Dairy Queen. You guys will finally get a little tour around town. Uh, I wanted to do that earlier when I was still living there, but I guess I just never really got around to it. You know, either because I was working or, you know, just plain didn't feel like it. So, um, yeah, you'll get a quick little tour around town. You'll get to see the uh, infamous Miles Dairy Queen which, uh, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinion, is a far superior Dairy Queen than uh, your average daily, like, brazier-style Dairy Queen. It's actually like a sit-down restaurant, and you can order a, a lot of stuff that's not on the menu, or on, like, a conventional uh, Dairy Queen menu. Y you'll get an idea when I go in there and, you know, you guys get to actually see the place. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna turn on the car now, because it's fucking hot as hell in here, and uh, get on going, so, CNBG. Hey, guys, it's Andy. Here with Ariopolis. Hey. <laughs> you sound thrilled. Yeah, man, I'm in BG uh, eating some Chipotle. 
And for like a hair under eight bucks, this is like super friggin' awesome. Got myself a fajita burrito with chicken. And uh, it's awesome. Ariopolis got himself a fajita, fajita burrito with steak. How is it? Meaty. Well, you heard it here. So yeah. All right, guys, it's Andy Son here again. I uh, just got done eating Chipotle with my best bud, Ariopolis. Um, he had to scoot on home, too. He's going to visit his folks for the weekend, so yeah. So yeah, Chipotle, uh, for those of you who don't know, is basically like a, a high-class Taco Bell, basically. It's very minimalistic. They honestly don't have a lot of uh, item choices, but uh, that's definitely a good thing. So there's less, uh, less time that you're just kind of sitting there confused about what you want. As I said before, I ordered a fajita burrito with chicken. Uh, chicken that ran me about 5.95 then a drink which they charged me an outrageous price for so all in all totaled uh, i think a hair less than uh eight bucks but seriously it's the best burrito i've ever had ever and i really miss having access to it here in bowling green because you know i live in salina now Really glad I had that meal with Ariopolis. We talked about several things like uh, my planning. Uh, the inherent fl I discussed my plan with him, my uh, three to five year plan involving education and things like that. And uh, he basically pointed out several uh, glaring flaws. The big flaw with a lot of my plans is that I think too long term. And because I think too long term, um, if anything, happens to screw something up in that plan then my entire rest of my plan is just kind of thrown by the wayside as made evident by my uh, getting kicked out of my apartment that kind of threw off schooling and things like that so he told me to think kind of short term just think like a one to two year plan instead of a three to five yes. he presented a very uh, a very good argument about it and I think we're gonna go with it um, just to give you the basic rundown, I'll just be uh, trying to find my own place in Salina instead of living with my parents. Now, I was kind of against that just because I thought, well, you know, I'll be cutting costs if I live with my parents. Granted, they get on my nerves and shit, but at least I'd be cutting costs. I won't have to buy my own food. I won't have to worry about utilities. Uh, the only thing I have to worry about is just rent money and maybe a little extra for internet and just, like, gas for the car and stuff like that. Um, but he did present a, a one-sentence argument that just... Pfft, completely flattened that and that was that you know they don't I mean well my mom's very supportive it's just my stepdad kind of comes in and in instigates you know everything in the household while I get along with all my other family members uh, I do get along with my stepdad don't get me wrong especially after moving out I do get along with him fairly well it's just I know that after a time I'll begin to get kind of annoying and he'll want me out again so since you know, I'll be in the area for a while anyway. I decided to first and foremost get a job. Um, I already applied for an IT position. Fingers crossed, hoping that it comes to fruition. So after I get either the IT position or some other position that'll allow me to afford an apartment, I'll uh, save up for a couple months so I have a uh, rent deposit, that sort of thing. And then move out into the apartment and then after I have everything all settled I got all the stuff I need I have a good amount saved up and stuff like that which should be by year's end if I calculated everything right then I will uh, start college at uh, Owens Community College online after I start Owens which should be uh, the spring semester of 2010 so pretty much like January of this coming year and I'll just go for my associate's degree which should take me uh, just I have a rough calculation should take me at least a year so we're talking like two semesters here um, possibly three just depending on how they uh, how my uh, credits from ITT Tech transfer over I mean if I'm allowed to take a lot you know a lot of my credits and stuff I might only have to take you know two semesters ideally I just want to take one but it's okay if I you know if it takes me two semesters that's fine and since I'll be doing that for a year anyway, you know, I might as well just get my own place because another big argument I had against getting my own place this early in the game was that I'd have to sign a year lease. And I was thinking, you know, by the time I get done with co with uh, my associate's degree, then, you know, I want to transfer over to the University of Finley or maybe like Ohio Northern or something to get my four year that it'll be less than a year before I can do that. But after looking it over again, I found that you know, I'll just be in the area for a year anyway and if not i'll just uh, work and save up for a bit until you know i'm able to do it so basic breakdown um uh, get a job save up to get a new place go uh to online owens community college then go for my four-year four-point plan pretty simple 
And uh, anyway, uh, we're going to be taking a little tour around Bowling Green since I'm in the area and will be for a little bit. So um, the first place I want to take you is to uh, Finders. Now, Finders is a, basically like a record store on crack. I'm sure there's bigger record stores and stuff, but uh, this is definitely one of the biggest that I've seen. And it's got a lot of really great selections of artists that I love. Like, uh, there, I saw a couple Owl City CDs. I saw, like, an entire thing of Al Di Miola stuff. I was, like, flipping the fuck out. I was like, no way. I was like, they don't have Al Di Miola. Nope. Most people don't even know who the hell he is. Little did I know. This is... They have uh, jazz guitar stuff up here in B at BGSU, so obviously they're going to have... There's, like, a whole fucking section of jazz and fusion stuff. And I was just blown away. But enough about me talking about it. Let's go there. Hey, I'm here in Finders. And you guys thought I was kidding about the Aldi Miola. Check this shit out. Well, we got Elegant Gypsy, Consequence of Chaos, which I believe is his new one. Several copies of that. Casino, Grande Passion, Anthology. Uh, this weird collaboration, never heard of. The thing he did with McLaughlin and Paco de Lucia. Oh my god! So yeah, I'm basically in the, uh, the jazz section. It's like an actual, like, section of the store. So I'm, like, freaking out. They also have imports and stuff. Uh, but that's in a different section. So, hold on a sec, I'll take you there. Yeah, they even have stuff in the party free. Check it out. We got his live ear CD, loudspeaker, oh my god, and stuff by Friendly Fire. They even got stuff by Robert Fripp from King Crimson, Fripp and Eno, uh, Love Cannot Beat, or is that Bear, sorry. Uh, more Robert Fripp. God, they got like a ton of Ozzy Osbourne stuff. And there's from Kelly. Here, chocolate Aussie stuff. There we go. Oh my god, they got the new CD. They got all of Owl City. They got June, which is his first EP. Maybe I'm Dreaming. And two copies of Ocean Eyes. Isn't that awesome? Well, they got some imports here too, but. I want to get to other sections of town before uh, stuff starts closing, so, uh, yeah, see you in a bit. Yeah, here we are in downtown Bowling Green, give you guys a little panoramic view, or all-around view, right here. There's the Clausel. It used to be like a movie theater, but I guess they changed it over to like a thing where bands can go play. Uh, apparently there's a bar there, too, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this is basically like the downtown section with a lot of bars. Uh, just came out of just came out of Finders. Oh, by the way, give a quick little look here at the sign so you guys uh, know what to look for when you come here to BG. It's right here. Finders. Oh, they're also online. I'll put the link up on the sidebar. I think it's like Finders.com or Finders Music Store or something.com. So, oh yeah. I missed BG so much. I'm so glad I'm back, even though I'm going to be leaving very soon. Uh, yeah, this is great. Here's another look. I'm going down uh, Wooster Street right now. Let's see. That's another bar, Reverend's Bar and Grill. Next to that is the uh, Bowling Green Music Store. If you can still hear me, it's pretty loud out here. Um, I see there's the music store. And next to that is some kind of clothing apparel. Apparently there's a lot of them around here. So yeah, I love the music store. It's closed right now. I, I would go in, but I would go in, but it's closed. So yeah. Let's see, next place we're gonna go to is uh, Miles Dairy Queen. Uh, I worked there for a good three months, and uh, just gonna go there, show you guys the menu board, and uh, 
know, meet some of my old co-workers, and uh, I'll just get something simple like an ice cream cone. So yeah, see you there. So yeah, here we are at uh, Miles Dairy Queen. I had some fucking asshole from New Jersey. He, he, he like pulled in, and he like stopped as soon as he pulled in. So he was like blocking my fucking way to get in, and some guy was turning left to get out of there, so I couldn't fucking move. Thankfully, I wasn't in the middle of the road. Fucking Jersey asshole. Yeah, no offense to my New Jersey readers, but god damn, such ignorance. But enough about that. We're parked. We're good. Okay. Now, um, as you probably heard online, Miles Dairy Queen is significantly different than uh, all the other Dairy Queens. Now, if you're looking up this, the find this place on Google Maps and you're looking for like the standard Dairy Queen sign, you won't find it. It baffled me to you know try to find this damn place when I was just looking up on Google online because I couldn't find it. So, I'll give you a look at the sign. There it is way up there. Let's zoom in on that. Okay. See, it says Miles Dairy Queen. Like footlongs, hamburgers, Baker Street not open. I don't. Whoa. Yeah, I don't get the whole Baker Street thing. So, um, yeah. Let's go inside and get us a cone. Hi. Yeah. All right. Medium Butterfinger Blizzard. All right. Cinnamon. Three. Five. What is up, Rob? What are you taking pictures of? The board. Why? Because I won't be here for long. Oh. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I got myself a uh, a dollar Neapolitan cone. They don't normally do these just because you know sometimes they're a little busy. But since it's the fall season, they're uh, significantly slower. So check it out. Had to make it with uh, the strawberry vanilla swirl with chocolate on top. And uh, I already bit into it, so <laughs> that's not the actual height. But for a dollar, it is a damn fine cone. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we have a, uh, a veritable shit ton of uh, different Blizzard flavors that you won't find here, or that you won't find at other Dairy Queens. Um, there's also a bottled soda like the old school uh, Coke and Pepsi. Um, there's also various different uh, crush bottle flavors. I'm talking like beyond, you know, orange, strawberry, and grape. There's uh, like tropical punch, uh, pineapple, and uh, those are my two favorites. Oh, there's also peach, number one favorite. And uh, there's also different teas, uh, Jones Soda, different flavors of Jones Soda. They, uh, I don't know if they still have it, I can't see it, but they had this flavor called Jones Jumble. It was a limited edition flavor, and it, seriously, it tastes like liquid Skittles in the best possible way. Um, we also have s several energy drinks, like uh, Balls, B-A-W-L-S, which uh, if you guys go on thinkgeek.com, you're definitely familiar with. They got the Blue Balls, which is like regular, then they got Sugar Free, which is clear, then they got Red Balls, which is uh, cherry flavored. Then they got the Geek Beer, which is a uh, cap, which is a uh, caffeinated root beer. And there's also like different teas. And uh, uh, let's just uh, pan around and show you the place. See, that's where they keep it all and stuff like that. And it's an actual like sit-down restaurant. And uh, yeah. Yeah, despite my white balance, the seats are purple, not blue. So yeah. Um, I hope you, I hope I gave you guys a good look at the uh, the reader board. I I was just uh, trying to go over. So we have like a variable shit ton of flavors for blizzards. And uh, the thing about the blizzards is instead of flattening them at the very top of the cup, it actually goes over the cup. So if you get a small blizzard, you're essentially getting two small blizzards for the price of one. And the price of one small blizzard is around 290 which is an insane deal if you go to Dairy Queen and know what, you know what I'm talking about price-wise. And, uh, oh, there's my ball. I'm just saying, yeah, the ball guy right there, Chip Miles, he's been doing this for going on 40 years, so he knows his stuff, let me tell you. And... He's definitely a very straightforward kind of guy, but one of the nicest men I've ever met. Very, definitely very straightforward. Doesn't like to mince words or anything like that. 
and uh, he was very understanding about me quitting. Um, I don't know if he felt sad or anything, but it's definitely very straightforward. So, um, yeah. So if you'll excuse me, I, I better start, stop, talk, stop talking and eat this ice cream cone before it melts all over the place. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, just uh, finished my ice cream cone, and uh, I tried to get some good shots of the menu board so you guys could kind of get an idea of stuff, but I apologize if they're a little blurry. Um, but yeah, on my way out, I got myself something special. I got myself the Jones uh, limited edition uh, Jones Jumble. Uh, even though they have one in blue, I decided to get the green one because that's the one I'm used to. Jones Jumble, mixed flavored soda. Um, it's really kind of kooky, and there's a limited run on this, and it is a glass bottle. Uh, it's not a, you know, metal bottle, because you can see, or maybe not, because of the glare, but there's a clear part right here where the glass is. So, um, yeah, Whew. it's been a rough day. But yeah, I'm going to go to uh, Walmart, um, get some uh, engine cleaner, or like some fuel injection cleaner so I can put in the car so that way it can uh, get the engine clean because apparently uh, I waited a little too long to get my oil changed which I got it changed uh, the other day so um, yeah just gonna do that and then I will see you guys in Salina so yeah it's it's been fun coming back up here to BG have a little look around and stuff and uh, yeah so uh, this is Andy San signing off for now Hope you guys enjoyed my little trip through BG as much as I did. And uh, don't forget to take care of yourselves and each other. See ya. Hey guys, Sandy San here. I'm bringing you some uh, potentially uh, very exciting news. Um, I was browsing uh, pretty late last night, and uh, on a side note, I, I do apologize for posting uh, three times in a single day. I tried spacing them out, but I guess I just had a lot to say yesterday. But uh, anyway, getting back to the subject at hand, I was doing some browsing around the other day and I uh, found something uh, potentially interesting about uh, being able to go to Japan. So um, I'll tell you how I found it by let's. Let's go to my laptop. Okay, right now I'm on the, uh, the University of Finley's website. As you can see, it's my lovely 17-inch monitor. Okay, and uh, I basically just searched for a study abroad. Right there, you can't really see it. And I go to the first search result right here, which is University of Finley uh, hyphen study abroad. And then it has like a basic little thing of somebody in Jordan, another person in Ecuador. Um, that sort of thing. Uh, basically what you want to go to is the bottom it says programs, that's like UF programs, faculty led programs. Let's zoom in on that. You want to go around this section, you want to go to the affiliate programs. And that will get you to this little page right here. Now this page has nothing to do with Japan, it has a bunch of other um, excellent study abroad programs like there's stuff for London and things like that, which I would be definitely interested in if I was going to someplace other than Japan. But sticking with the subject at hand, which is Japan, we're going to go with CCIS, which is the short for the College Consortium for International Studies. Get that little click-click, and um, we want to go over here to where it says, uh, where would you like to study? Go in Asia, second one down. And it has semester pro programs in uh, Nanjing, China, I think I'm pronouncing that right, Bangalore, India, Tokyo, Japan. They also have summer programs for uh, Shanghai, Bangalore, and Tokyo. But um, since I want to spend more than the summer in Japan, uh, we're just going to click on the regular semester program for Tokyo, Japan. And it brings up this interesting little window. Um, I don't know if you can read the text, I'm just going to try to zoom out so you can see the whole thing. Um, it, says, it outlines uh, a school called the KCP International Language Institute. Um, it was founded in 1983 and it's lo located in Shinjuku. Which, uh, for people who uh, know a little bit about Japan, um, it's basically that place that was in Lost in Translation. It's, uh, as it says here, the business and entertainment and shopping center of Tokyo. Insanely expensive to live there. Marty Friedman lives there, as do a lot of uh, uh, Japanese celebrities. Just because it's, it's kind of uh, the Japanese equivalent of Hollywood, I guess you could say. And anyway, it says the KCP campus is a short walk from Shinjuku, Gionmei Station, on the Meiji uh, subway line, I think I'm pronouncing that right, sorry if I'm butchering them. Uh, from there, a student has access to such Tokyo landmarks and attractions as the Japanese government buildings, Shinjuku and Yogi Parks, which uh, a lot of uh, anime festivals are done there. Uh, Meiji Shrine, Tokyo Tower, and popular student destinations including Shibuya, which is where uh, Danny Chu, also known as the Tokyo Stormtrooper, did his little famous thing. And there's Harajuku, which is a place where you can buy a bunch of clothes and stuff. Uh, the institute has been featured in many publications throughout Asia and is recognized as a leader in Japanese education. Okay, and it basically just gives a quick little overview of what it would take for you, or in this case me, to actually go there. 
and it says uh, students take courses in intensive Japanese language training. So um, this is a bit different from taking like a normal college class. You're taking uber intensive Japanese. Uh, be begin to advance, which I like. It's not just something for somebody who knows a little about Japanese. It's straight from ground zero to uh, JLPT number one, which uh, for those who don't know, JLPT is a test of Japanese competency, which is debated by some people online, but is basically a general test for people who don't uh, who, where Japanese is not their native language, is a test to see how well they know Japanese. And one is the highest ranking. It goes from four to one, four being the lowest and one being the highest. And a lot of what the KCP International Language Institute, as I'll outline later, it, one of its main goals would be to get you fr to uh, JLPT level one. So it's definitely pretty darn intensive. Uh, anyway, continue on with the reading. Students take courses in intensive Japanese language training, beginning through advanced, and Japanese culture and civilization. Students interested in summer study abroad in Tokyo should see the list of summer program options. It's basically like this, but uh, only for the summertime. For room and board, students have two options, which is homestay, where I'm assuming you stay with the Japanese family, and it includes breakfast and dinner, or dormitory, where uh, meals and utilities are not included. You have to actually pay out of pocket for that sort of thing. Um, also, a 2.5 GPA on a 4.0 scale is required, as are two letters of recommendation, freshman through senior standing, and minimum age of 18. Now, the freshman through senior standing, I'm a little confused about that. I don't know if they mean, like, I have to graduate high school, or, or what? I'm, I'm a little confused about that. Um, it could be just a little bit of lost uh, in translation kind of dealios, but um, enough of that. Let's go to the actual KCP website, which I'll have loaded up here, which we'll get rid of. Um, so let's select the language. Uh, we'll go with Eagle, English. <laughs> and it just gives... It's actually pretty nicely done as far as the English. There's only, there's only a couple um, phrases, although they're really important, that I'm kind of confused about, as we'll get to here in a sec. Um, Let's just go with, uh, under the course tab, we'll go with uh, general. So let's see, it says right there, let me zoom in on that. Under the descriptions, so it clears up. Um, course applicants would be uh, those who wish to pass JLPT, which stands for Japanese Language Proficiency Test, level one, which is the highest rank you can get. Um, those who wish to acquire general linguistic skills of reading, writing, speaking, and listening to Japanese. Um, those who have a good, right, those who have a good, or those who have a goal, sorry, of enrolling in a Japanese technical school, uh, and which to acquire Japanese skills um, t in advance of taking the school courses. So basically, if you just don't want to take Japanese for four years and want to uh, learn it really, really quick, is what I'm getting from it. Um, those who have a goal of enrolling in a Japanese university slash graduate school in which to take subjects other than Japanese as optional sessions. Um, those who took Japanese as a major at their university back home slash already passed the LPT level one in which to improve their Japanese communication skills and require a higher level of proficiency that can be applied to a career as an interpreter slash translator. So they even go beyond the JLPT, which I think is uh, a and um, which, I think I said that wrong, but anyway. Um, those who are dispatched from companies as trainees and are not taking other special KCP courses. And uh, the qualifications for entrance, it's a little confusing, but I think it made a bit more sense before. Okay, the application, or applicants, I'm sorry, must have finished 12 years or longer of official education in their home countries or have an academic background equivalent to graduate from senior high school. So you just basically have to graduate high school. Just want to get from that. Um, the applicant must be eligible to receive a certificate of eligibility to enter Japan. Now see, that's the confusing part. I don't know if they mean um, I have to get like a passport, which I know I do if I have to enter Japan, of course. Um, I have to like, get a background check. Um, I'm not really sure what they mean by this. Uh, but anyway, number three is the applicant must have a reliable guarantor, which I'm assuming is for, you know, the pay stuff. Um, I don't know exactly how we get that. Um, that's something I have to discuss. But anyway, the admissions process, one line. Applicants need to pass documentary uh, elimination in order to be accepted into the course, which I'm assuming is like background checks and that sort of thing. Um, class subjects would be Japanese, Japanese social situations, and Japanese cultural experience. Class hours are Monday through Friday, which is roughly 20 hours a week. There's a morning class, which starts at 9, starts at 9 a.m. and uh, works till about 12:15 uh, in the afternoon. And there's an afternoon class from uh, 1:30 in the afternoon till 4:45. And there's also a co-curricular co classes, which I guess are like after-school classes, that start um, at 12:30 in the afternoon to uh, 1.15 in the afternoon. Those consist of a tea ceremony, kodo, which is a, uh, it's a very unique instrument to Japan. It, it sounds like a piano, but is played almost like a harp. People equip, uh, compare it to the, uh, like a Japanese harp, although to me it sounds like a piano, even though it's plucked instead of tapped, like a piano is. But semantics, semantics. Um, conversation class, school newspaper clubs, etc. So, I'm pretty gosh darn pumped to say the least about all this. Um, what would this mean for me? Well, basically what I would do is I would only have to take a couple classes at a uh, almost community college in order to boost my GPA to uh, pass the 2.5 level, which should only take me like probably a semester, I believe. And uh, after that, I'm gonna talk with the University of Finley. Of, uh, see, it's affiliated with them. I could go to uh, the KCB school directly, but I prefer to go with the uh, University of Finley to help back me up just because they're affiliated with it, so they're familiar with the program. They kind of know what's going on a bit more than I do. And obviously I have some questions 
like the whole uh, certificate to enter Japan. What does that mean? I don't know if that means like if it's for strictly graduates, but it did say, you know, you have to be at least 18 years old to enter. So I don't know if they're talking about like super duper college graduate prodigies, like a degree when they're 12 or something. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of questions that I want answered, uh, hopefully by the University of Finley, who's affiliated with this program. And uh, so uh, there's been a bit of a change of uh, life plans. Um, basically, um, I'm still going to try to get a job because uh, I got a thing from unemployment saying that um, I'm ineligible for unemployment at this time. I did send a letter of appeal for their outlining my situation, but um, in the event that I still won't be able to get unemployment, I'm still going to be searching around for jobs uh, in the local area. After, I've, uh, after I have a job, I'm going to start saving up in order to move out to my own place. But um, judging from this information, I don't know if I'll be in the area for an entire year. So I'm a little concerned about that. I don't know if I should uh, try to find a, a short-term lease place where instead of leasing for a year, I could lease for like six months or something and maybe get like a three-month extension or something like that. Because I'll be here for a long amount of time, but I don't think I'll be here for an entire year. Or at least I plan to be. So um, that's just a little something to think about. Um, but anyway, going back to the plan, um, get a job, find like a short-term like apartment or something with like a six to nine month lease instead of a, a full 12 months. Um, once I've gotten that, uh, sign up to take a classes at Owens Community College. I won't even have to take a very large uh, course load either. I'll just probably have to take like basic English and math, which is what I was planning to do from the very, very beginning. So it wouldn't be that new to me. Um, after I've passed those classes and uh, raised my GPA to uh, 2.5 or above, hopefully above, but at least 2.5, then I will talk with the University of Finley about this uh, program to sign for the KCB. and. Uh, Hopefully I'll be able to go to Japan. Uh, that program is, uh, I believe, if I look at it real quick, it is a, uh, oh wow, it's actually a two-year program. They have uh, lesser programs where you can go for like one and a half years and stuff, but um, it's actually a two-year program. I didn't know that. I thought it was just for a year. Wow. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, if I uh, get approved for all that, file the paperwork, uh, get loan, well not loans, but uh, financial aid, hopefully some grants will be able to help cover the expenses. Um, and false fails, just pay off all my Sally May stuff so I can draw out more loans, which uh, I think is only up to like 360, maybe 400 bucks, which sounds like a lot, and it is, but this is a good investment, and I really want to go through with it. So I'm really, really excited. I, I didn't even really know about this, so um, I'm going to try to pursue it as much as I can, and I see that I've been ranting for a very long time, so um, I'll just end it here. Um, this is Andy San. Signing off for now. Wishing uh, you guys an excellent day. Oh, by the way, um, if you've been going to my uh, the Andy Son account, I still don't have any videos up on it yet, but I'm going to be uploading uh, my first video today. So today will be another uh, two, po two post day because I'll be posting this vlog as well as uh, my very first uh, video from my Andy Son account, which was uh, Ben's Karate Ponage. Uh, the best, probably the best five seconds you'll ever spend, I think. Um, so I look forward to that. Uh, once again, this is Andy Son signing off for now. Hope you guys are having an excellent day, and uh, I won't. Uh, I won't be uploading videos or any vlogs on Thursday because that's when my stepdad comes. So um, I'll be resuming either on Sunday or Monday. So I'm not sure how this week's Twitter Thursday throwdown will work. I'll try to uh, get it scheduled, but uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, this is Andy-san. Sign off for now. You guys have an excellent day. See ya. Hey guys, it's the Andy-san here, and I have some exciting news. Okay. Um, my cousin in Michigan called me yesterday, and she says that her and her boyfriend are getting a, an apartment together, but they could only find a two-bedroom apartment, and since they don't really have any use for the other room, uh, she asked me if I wanted to uh, move in with them. Obviously, I said yes, because <laughs> I don't really have much going for me here, so, yeah. So, yeah, they'll be moving in after Christmas and sometime early in January, I believe, is what she said. And uh, I'm I'm really excited and looking forward to it. So obviously uh, some things are changing a bit. Whereas I was going to apply to Owens Community College and do some stuff like that online, I've decided to go to a different community college. I'm going to uh, my cousin's community college, Lansing, which is uh, Lansing Community College. Through some kind of uh, like agreement with the uh, the county that she lives in, uh, she's able to get her tuition and everything half off. From an already cheap college to half off, that's pretty damn amazing if I do say so myself. Since we'll still be living in the same county, I'll be able to uh, reap the benefits too. So yeah, I'll be going to uh, Lansing Community College. I'll just be taking, you know, two classes online, so it'll be exactly the same as if I were going to Owens, so I won't have to actually go to the classroom or anything, but if I needed to, 
she says that she just takes like a bus or something and she pretty much does the same thing but she has some classes at the actual campus too she basically just goes there for uh, Japanese courses which I thought about doing but I think it would be best if I just kind of stuck with uh, just two online courses because basically the whole reason I'm going to community college is to boost my GPA up anyway and I think two general education courses getting them out of the way will be a uh, a good start. Yeah, I'll just continue to study Japanese independently. I'll kind of learn from what she's learning so that way, you know, I don't have to pay an extra like 400 some bucks or whatever to take the class. Not to mention going back and forth to Lansing, which actually isn't that far away from where she lives. But still, you know, <laughs> saves me a trip and all that. So yeah, I'm really, really excited. And uh, like, like I said, it does change some plans. Uh, instead of going to Owens, I'll be going to Lansing Community College. I still want to do the whole KCP thing. It's just, uh, I think after I get my GPA boosted up at Lansing, then I will talk, uh, instead of talking with uh, the University of Finley, I'll talk with uh, a campus in uh, in Michigan, most likely uh, Michigan State, if I can. That'd be pretty flippin' sweet. But if not, there's probably a bunch of other campuses that are affiliated with the KCB or KCP. I don't know what it is program. I'll just go through them and then do my classes and then I'll just uh, actually go to Japan. But the thing is, um, I probably won't be able to actually go there until uh, probably the fall of next year. If they do accept me and I have the money for everything, because it, it is kind of expensive, so I don't think I'll be able to stay for a, uh, a full year there, at least not initially, unless they get like a, a shit ton of scholarships and all that. Even if I just go to Japan for like a semester, that's, that's fine by me. Because I mean, I've never really lived too far out of state before. I think the furthest I've ever lived was uh, back in Michigan, and then there was a brief time I lived in Indiana, but yeah, not, I haven't really <laughs> strayed too far out of, you know, even the Midwest of uh, America, so I think it'll be really interesting for me to uh, kind of get out of, you know, my country and out of my element, I guess, because I mean, even though I know a lot about Japan and culture and customs and stuff, there's still a lot of stuff that I'm going to have to learn, you know, kind of on the fly, I guess. Just, you know, just because. So, I'm definitely open to that and uh, that sort of thing. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty damn excited. And, uh, oh, by the way, uh, expenses are also going to be uh, pretty cheap, too. With rent and everything being split between three people, we're only going to pay 150 bucks a piece for rent. And, of course, you know, there's also utilities and food expense and gas and this, that, and the other. But still, 150 bucks for rent a month? That is... <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that cheap of rent before. I mean, short of free. But, you know... That hasn't happened too often. And since I know it's family, I know I won't get hustled about the whole subleasing agreement. So basically, uh, my new game plan is I'm still going to look for a job, don't get me wrong, because I, I need the money to actually move in <laughs> and live off of while I'm looking for a job up there. Even though she says that despite a, an incredibly high uh, unemployment rate, I mean, Michigan has the highest unemployment rate of uh, any state in the country. I think last I checked, it was like 15 or 16, maybe even 17% of the state was unemployed. You know, there's a lot of unemployed people looking for jobs, but on the other hand, there's also uh, job opportunities because there's lots of restaurants in the area, and there's also a city close by that there's even more restaurants and other places of business. And like I did in Bowling Green, I don't really mind working in a restaurant as long as I'm kind of pursuing my goals. You know, I have my own place, I'm maintaining it. I'm going to college, I mean, I'm actually doing something with my life. So I'll be staying up there for several months. Like I said before, I'll be up there until I leave for Japan, which, if everything goes right, I mean, something could happen and I, pr and I might not be able to go, but if everything goes right and I'm able to go, then I will leave sometime in October, I believe. So they'll have to get like a roommate to cover for a couple months that I'm not there. Or, you know, if they have enough money saved up, they could just cover it themselves. But still, yeah, I'm really excited and I'm going to do videos and all sorts of stuff up there, obviously. And uh, my cousin's a big anime freak, too, like me. So, uh, yeah, we might even do like some co-anime reviews. Like if she has an anime that she wants to watch and, you know, we could watch it together and then maybe review it together or something just to kind of, you know, mix things up so it's not just, you know, you don't see my big old head talking to a camera all the time. Even though I know you like that. Nah, just kidding. You probably don't. 
But still, you know, I'm uh, I'm just rambling on because I'm so excited, and I'm also uh, kind of hopped up on frozen coffee. Yeah, I went to this place in uh, Salina, and I got here's the remnants of my frozen coffee. Mm. That's pretty damn awesome. I haven't had frozen coffee since uh, I was in Urbana way back in the day. <laughs> in Urbana with money. So yeah, I'm pretty psyched. And yeah, that's, that's what I want to tell you. Oh, and uh, I'm still working on my CD review, but it's coming along a lot slower than I thought. For some reason, I was able to write the Megadeth CD review in like an hour, maybe 45 minutes. But this one is just taking days just because I get distracted. There's some parts where I don't really know what to say. So if it does end up sounding a little strange, I do apologize. But I am going to try my best to uh, clear up inconsistencies and also put out a you know, a decent video. It should be done, uh, well, I was going to say by the end of this week, but that's pretty much already happened, so it's probably going to be done by the end of next week, or uh, very early the week after. Um, this video is getting kind of long, so I'm just going to sign off for now. This is the Andy song, signing off for now, like I said. <laughs> Wishing you guys an excellent day, wherever you may be, and uh, I hope to get that seed review out for you guys soon. See ya. Hey guys, it's the Andy song here. I want to begin this vlog by first and foremost apologizing to my stepdad for some rude comments that I made to the eBay auction for his TV. I was angry at some of the people who emailed me lowball offers, and also at my stepdad who I felt wasn't lowering his reserve price to compete in today's online market. However, I had lost sight of the fact that this television has been with us for two years and has never given us a single problem. It's still in excellent condition, shelves and all. Although yes, you can get a flat screen at Walmart for a lower price, I honestly find it difficult to put a price on reliability. I had also put in the auction the reason why we were selling it. I felt that doing that would give the auction a personal touch and would persuade people to purchase the TV. My mom thought it was just weird in that quote, nobody puts up comments on eBay. I also apologize for doing that. Although I believe that I was acting in the right for trying to put a personal touch on the auction, it was wrong of me to make nasty comments no matter how you slice it. It has made my family feel like I had slapped them in the face, despite taking me in again and giving me food and even helping me move out to begin with. For this, I also apologize. I did put the TV back up on eBay, so if you'd like to check it out, just uh, click the link in the sidebar. Now, I've noticed over the past couple weeks that I've become more prone to fits of anger, despite the happy-go-lucky guy you see on YouTube. I don't know if it's the change of seasons, or that my job situation isn't going where I want it to, or that I'm not yet making enough money for my website to support myself. Maybe it's none of these things. Maybe it's all of them. All I know is that I need to get a job so that I can save up to move out again. Once I've secured a job and moved out, then I can work on becoming financially independent from a minimum wage job via my blog. I know that all the skeptics are rolling their eyes at me and thinking that I should get real and stick with a regular 9 to 5 existence. However, I know in my heart that I won't be truly happy working a normal job, whether or not I like my coworkers and or bosses. Besides, if I can make close to 40 bucks a month doing what I love, then I can surely bump it up to a level where I can live a good life doing only what I love. It's only a matter of time and continually doing what I love before I reach that point in my life. My album review videos have been getting very positive feedback, as well as my brand new YouTube collaboration with Bobby Judo and Crimson Igloo, where I speak in Japanese and they coach me on how I can improve. I'm going to be putting up a new video later on today. By doing these reviews and collaborations, I know that I'm doing a good service to the YouTube community, as well as people interested in the albums or just learning Japanese. As a result, I know that my subscriber count and my video views will continue to increase. With that, I'll be able to increase the traffic to my website, and thus, my income. I'm not trying to come off as arrogant or as a self-fulfilling prophet or anything. I'm merely stating that I can do what I love and make a living doing it. Um, I'm going to talk to Taco Bell in the morning to see if I can get my old job back from there, as well as look into some more job opportunities in the area. So, um, this is Andy San, signing off for now, and uh, I'll see you guys later on today. See ya. 
Hey guys, it's the Andy Son here. Thought I'd just check in with a quick little vlog. Today's my mom's birthday, and uh, just kind of out and about on this uh, gorgeous Saturday, because the weather's really nice here in Ohio for some reason. Yeah, I just thought I'd go on a nice little bike ride, kind of get out of the house, because I've been getting, you know, wicked case of cabin fever lately. Yeah, the uh, auction for the TV that I had put up on eBay but didn't sell, despite a whole lot of uh, interest from uh, you guys. I guess, you know, the era of the uh, tube television has come and gone. People are more interested in buying flat screens and stuff now, which I don't blame them. I mean, what would you rather have, a 52-inch uh, LCD or a plasma TV that you can pretty much put under your arm and carry to the car and put it up with no problem, or a 200-plus pound monstrosity that you got to get two of your other friends to help you with? I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer. And, you know, I'd honestly, like, I'd honestly prefer a, uh, an LCD TV over a regular tube style or whatever. Just not just for picture quality, but for weight purposes, storing, I mean, it takes a lot less, takes up a lot less space and things like that, so. And, you know, we're, we were trying to sell the TV in order to get a flat screen television. You know, the whole job uh, front is kind of looking grim right now as winter is slowly approaching. Honestly, the uh, job market has pretty much died ever since, I'd say, around August. Just because, you know, companies stop hiring and, uh, you know, as winter approaches, you get less customers and stuff. Even though you might have, like, a Christmas boost from January to February and a little into March is when... You know, people don't see a lot of sales just because of the whole after Christmas spending hangover, I guess. Yeah, so I've applied at, uh, God, either th like up to 30 or 40 different places. Got interviewed once to be a car salesman. That didn't really turn out, which I'm kind of glad just because I don't really fancy myself as a car salesman. As I had said before in one of my previous vlogs, I was planning on moving with my cousin up to Michigan because she was going to get an apartment with her boyfriend and wanted me to come along to keep the rent low, which I think is a good idea, but I don't know. The way the economy, the uh, American economy, as well as Michigan's economy is looking, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. I'm keeping that option open just in case, you know, my stepdad gets pissed at me and decides to kick me out again for whatever asinine reason it will be this year, but... I don't know, chances are I probably won't go just because, you know, unemployment up there I think is it's either 16 or 17 percent of Michigan is unemployed. Yeah, the unemployment rate in that particular county that we're going to be living in, I believe it's around 12 percent, while the county that I'm living in is at 9 percent. If I can't find a job with a 9% unemployment rate, I sure as hell won't be able to find one with a 12%. So that begs the question, you know, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? Although I'm not being kicked out as of this moment, I'm still on pretty good terms with my stepdad and everything, but I know that there will come a time where, you know, he'll get pissed at me for doing something or not doing something or just playing get pissed at me because he, had a, he has a tendency to do that a lot. So I just want to make sure my bases are covered this time. I have a plan B lined up just in case. I'm still waiting on unemployment to get back with me as far as uh, receiving unemployment compensation. I have to do some kind of over the phone interview dealio and uh, they sent me a thing in the mail saying that it will happen but they haven't sent me anything uh, saying when it will happen. I'm gonna give them a call on Monday to see what's up. Hopefully I'll be able to get all the unemployment that I've been continually applying for, you know, all the weeks that I've applied for unemployment compensation. Hopefully I'll get all that when it's awarded to me, which if it is, <laughs> it'll be uh, well over $1,000. I think right now it's up to somewhere around 1300 Once I apply for this week, it'll be over 1400 So yeah, that should be a, a decent little nest egg to uh, move out with. You know, it should give me enough for my deposit, rent, a little bit extra for uh, food and bills and stuff like that. I'm currently uh, thinking about, you know, possibly moving to a warmer climate just because, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of tired of living in the same old area of the world. I was going to say America, but just the world. And uh, I want to experience, you know, a different climate, a different area. Despite getting kicked out of my apartment in Bowling Green and having to move away from everything that I've slowly worked up to building, you know, I did enjoy my experience there. It was definitely helpful and insightful in order for me to figure out, you know, my expenses, especially my food expenses, because at that point I had already figured out rent and had a good idea for how much I'd pay in utilities and 
things like that. But for something like food, it's really, at the time, it was really difficult for me to uh, just kind of figure out, I guess, just because I didn't really know how much I'd eat, um, how much I'd spend on food, not to mention other stuff that I don't normally spend on on a regular basis, like shampoo, deodorant, um, razors, you know, the little shit. <laughs> so uh, moving out, even though I was only out for close to three months, it was helpful in uh, helping me figure out what my budget will be the next time I move out. And it also helps to know what kind of foods I like. I know that's kind of a, kind of a strange thing to say, but you know, when you're out on your own, you definitely know the kind of foods that you enjoy, and you kind of push away from stuff that you don't really care for. In my case, stuff that's too difficult or too lengthy to prepare. I normally kind of shy away from stuff like that. When I was living in Bowling Green, I tended to gravitate towards uh, like microwavable stuff, like the uh, the Innovation cooking line. That stuff was awesome. Friggin' spicy beef and broccoli, that stuff was practically like my main lunch dish when I wasn't having tuna salsa. It was pretty good, pretty good. So yeah, basically I'm currently entertaining the idea of moving to California. And I know, I know, the economic climate over there is really, really bad. Not as bad as Michigan, but still uh, definitely not the uh, job hot spot, <laughs> as it were. But despite California's uh, overall bad job climate, there are a couple of uh, spots where jobs are uh, not really plentiful, just uh, the economy's not quite as bad down there. And uh, one of them is Orange County, and uh, I'm thinking of moving over there. Because, I mean, it's it's right by the beach, you know, the jobs are good, the weather's nice, I mean, it's always, it's usually sunny without being, you know, overly humid, which was a main complaint I heard from uh, Charles Trippy, who lives in Florida. That was kind of a main thing of his, was that it was too humid, and uh, it would rain, like, all the time, and then it'd be sunny. I mean, I liked Florida when I visited it, when we went to Disney a couple years, Disney World a couple years ago, but I wouldn't want to live there, especially with the, you know, the rain that we had to put up with. I mean, there was one day where the rain just came down really, really heavy, and, uh, nah, I don't want to deal with that. Plus hurricanes and stuff like that, it's just, nah, nah, not gonna deal with that. Yeah, if any of you guys live out in the, uh, California area, or have lived out there, uh, specifically Orange County, leave me a comment saying, uh, tell me, you know, what it's like out there, you know, what the, how are the jobs, the climate, the people, whatever you want to put down. I have to tell you guys before I go that my videos for this coming week might be a bit delayed just because my stepdad's going to be coming on Monday and he may or may not want me on the internet. Probably not just because, I don't know, he's weird. So I might not get my Monday video or my Wednesday video out depending on how long he's going to stay. If that were to happen, then next week I'll put out two videos. Two videos. I'll still try to get them recorded and then edited and everything. I mean, I already have an idea for my uh, my CD review already done in my head. I still need to work on my uh, Japanese video because I don't really know what I'm going to be doing in it. I don't really know what I'm going to be doing or saying, but I should have some time to figure it out. And uh, yeah, so this is the Andy San signing off for now. Hoping to see you guys on Monday, but if not, I'll see you the following week. Week. See ya. Hey guys, this is the Andy Son here. We're out in the dog park again on another wonderful November day here in Ohio. Let's check it out. There's Zeus and Leto. There they are. You just want to see. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm out here with my youngest brother, Raji. Say hi, Raji. Hi. <laughs> what the heck are you, dog? <laughs> oh, there she goes. Go ahead. Oh, you got the bag. You do it. Come on, man. You do. I did it last time. You do it. Come on. You do it. Just put the stuff down and then pick it up. I don't know how to do it. You do dog crap all the time. You just you pick know, it up I and don't then. You don't have a dog scooper. You don't need a friggin' dog scooper. Oh my god. What? Yeah, they even updated the dog park a little bit. See, they got, like, benches. I don't know, it's kind of bright, but they got, like, benches. And stuff like that. And, uh, it's pretty cool, pretty cool. 
What's up, Zeus? Yeah, we had to clean up your crap earlier. Oh, there he goes. There it is. It's right there. It's right there. Go get it. Go get it, puppies. Go get it. Go get it, puppies. Go get it. Gorilla filmmaking. Ah, there he is. There he is. Ah, fuck that. You feeling good, baby girl? You feeling good? You need to hang out with the other dogs. Yeah. Oh, not another friend. No, I think it's just a pee. See? Right. Just a pee. All right. I don't think we have to worry about them crap anymore. Yeah. <laughs> when I was first filming this, friggin' Lido decided to take a crap so I had to stop and pick it up. So, I don't know if you guys can still hear me with that wind. Sorry about that. But yeah. Uh, there's old Zeuser. Oh god, I, I feel like Leader's coming too. Uh, well at least you got another bag. And this time you're cleaning it up. I already showed you how. Oh. She's all good. Those are pretty big, those are pretty big traps, so I don't, I don't think I'll have to deal with that. While we're here. Does he have the ball? Huh? Alright. Well come on Zeus, give us the ball. Zeus, come on. Oh, look at the doggies playing over there. I don't know if you can see that. They're way out there. Look at the other doggies. Let me zoom in. Ah, oh, look at them play. Oh, here they come, here they come, here they come. There they go. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Hello, Lido. She's so happy. She's jumping for joy. Let's go. Come on, Zuzu, let's go. Run. Run. Oh, I think it's not good. Just a little bit of a... See, they got, like, benches and stuff here, too. It's pretty cool. <laughs> look at the old... Look at the doggies. Look at them go. Lead out, come on. Go play the other doggies. <laughs> hey, Roger, go throw, go throw this ball. Okay. He's got it. He's right there. Drop it. Drop it. Get it. Oh, come on, Zeus. Uh, come on, Zeus. Drop the ball. Come on. Come on. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Come on, Zeus. Give me the ball. Drop it, Zeus. Come on, Zeus. Drop it. Drop it. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Ah. Ah. Oh, and they got Lido slobber. Come on, let's go. Camera's all good. <laughs> Thought I got Lido slobber. <laughs> slobber. Mm. Oh, come on, Zeus, give us the ball. We'll throw it around. Drop it. Man, he's all slobbery. Come on, Zeus, sir, drop the ball. Drop it. Can you get it from him? Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Come on, Zeus. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting water at you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, he's on screen, man. Alright, let's go. Right. Let's go. Oh, no. Come on. Wanna fetch the ball? Drop it. Drop it. Right. He's just holding on to that ball, man. Hey, look, it's a Taco Bell dog. It's a Taco Bell dog. You can't a Taco Bell. You can't a Taco Bell. Alright, let's go walk around the park some more. Let's go walk around the park some more. Maybe he'll lighten up and stuff like that. Alright. Okay, come on, guys. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. He dropped the ball. Come on, baby girl. Come on, baby girl. Give me the ball. Rip, rip, rip. Ah. Oh. He got the ball. He got the ball. Uh oh. Boosh. There it goes. 
he's way out there, dang. Good thing you have your right arm open. I couldn't throw that far as my left arm. Here he comes. There he is. There he is. There he is. Look at the chihuahuas. Oh yeah, look at them. Uh, <laughs> look how fast this is. Yeah, those, those little buggers are fast. I just, let's go. Now he's got to pee again. Jeez. You're gonna get freaking dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, come on, Lido. Yeah. Hey, Lido. Hey. Cool her down. Yeah. It's just to cool you down, dude. There you go. Alright, pups. Let's go. Do you have the ball? Oh, he has the ball. Okay. Oh, there it is. There it is. Go get it. Uh -huh. Come on. You gotta get ready. There it goes. There it goes. Whoosh. There he is, sitting out there all proud and chewing on the ball. I see you, Zeus, sir. I see you. Just sitting out there. Uh, oh, uh -huh. What are you guys doing? What's up, baby girl? I don't think she wants this. Yeah, she's like, Yeah, Zeus. What's up? Oh, oh yeah, he wants it. He's like, ah. Oh. He's like, ah, 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 there's a couple of them out there. They just kind of disappeared. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Like when she was going to pee, Raji squirted a little bit of water on her back to cool her down, and it was just like kind of rolling off. It was cool. All right. I think you'd be able to see it with this kind of camera. Oh, yeah. Look, there's some more doggies. Here they come. Whoosh. Ah, that's bright. Okay. Love that. All right, guys. You happy, baby girl? You happy? Oh, man. You can just see the look on her face. She's so happy. She's so happy. Uh oh. He's got the ball. He's got the ball. Oosh. There he goes. There he goes. He doesn't even know where it's at. Go get it, Zeus. He's kind of sitting out there. What you up to, Lito? Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Uh oh. The more doggies are coming to play. Uh oh. I don't think they're going to play nice. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? Well, I can't. <laughs> Look at the lake view. Look at that lake view. That's just one. That dog got the ball. Oh, he's got the ball now? Yeah. 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 Wow. Uh, that dog got the ball. Oh, he's got the ball now? Yeah. Wow. I mean, check out this lake view. It's just incredible out there, you know. Then we got baby girl. Here we go. Zooming out. <laughs> there comes Zeus, sir. Oh, that's bright. There he comes. Well, <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, the dogs are having a good old time out here, and this video is getting kind of long, so, uh, yeah, this is the Andy song. Signing off for now. Hoping to see you guys again soon. Later. Hey guys, it's Danny San here. I thought I'd give you a, a quick little update on uh, what's going on with the job hunt and everything. If you've been reading my blog, you probably already know that uh, 
I haven't really gotten any job leads or anything like that, and I've been getting up pretty early, calling them every single day and everything, but so far I haven't gotten anything. It's been uh, over three months, going on four, since I uh, left Bowling Green, and uh, it's, it's been rough. I mean, moving back in with the parents, it's, you know, I just had like a quick two, three month taste of freedom, and I had to move back in with the parents or face homelessness. <laughs> starting to get on everybody's nerves again. I don't know why, but it, it just happens. Plus, with this whole not being able to find a job thing, I'm kind of on edge, too. So, after some careful consideration and weighing all my options and all that, I've decided to try to join the Job Corps. And I know it's basically like ghetto college. <laughs> but yeah, right now I don't really see any other option for myself other than to just wait till, like, February, March, when uh, people around here are hiring. But I don't think I'll be living there that long, <laughs> the rate everything's going, just because I know my stepdad can't stand me anymore, even though he's hardly home. Just the fact that I'm there is uh, pissing him off. I don't know, the whole thing's kind of pissing me off too, just because I'm, I'm actually going to be turning 24 next week, and I'm still living with my parents. Tried finding a job for the past three, four months, and uh, I haven't come up with anything, not even like a a dinky little part-time job just because you know it's winter time nobody's hiring and all that stuff and uh i did you know tell myself that i would go back to college starting next year and although job corps technically isn't considered college it's basically like ghetto college and you pretty much do the same things that you would do in college you go to class you live in a dormitory seems like college to me <laughs> you get a uh, limited amount of college credit so that's actually kind of a good thing so that way i won't have to take so many classes even if it's only just a couple credits, you know, every little bit helps. Yeah, I called the uh, the Job Corps people t earlier today. They said that they would send me, like, a pamphlet and have somebody call me to get in touch. Uh, they also gave me a number, which I called and left a message. So, um, we'll see how that goes. I'm hoping to uh, actually start the whole Job Corps thing uh, beginning of uh, this coming year. So uh, that way I can still be with the folks for the holiday season. Then after that's all said and done, just do the whole Job Corps thing, and it'll basically be like I'm in college. According to their website, the uh, the courses can last anywhere from like eight months to uh, up to two years, depending on uh, the field that I go in and the pace that I go and things of that nature. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, wanted to make this quick little vlog and uh, tell you guys uh, what's what's going on. So, uh, this is the Andy Son, signing off for now. Hoping you guys uh, check out my uh, JVID, which will be shown a little bit after this vlog. So, um, yeah, hope to see you there. Later. Hey, gang, it's the Andy Son here. Um, I'd like to pose a question to you, my viewers and readers. Should I enroll in the Navy? To be honest, I'm at a crossroads in my life. If you've been reading my blog for the past couple months, you know that in June of this year, I moved out of my parents' house to live on my own for the first time in my life. This is uh, not counting college. I really enjoyed being on my own, and I was beginning to pick up the pieces of my life. You see, I had failed out of two colleges by 2007, and my life has been incredibly unstable ever since. Bouncing between jobs and homes, I was just plain frustrated with my life and had no idea on how to fix it. This is uh, when I began to read uh, Steve Pavlina's blog, and things were moving slowly in the right direction, but I didn't really get anywhere until I moved out. After I had moved out, I began to think clearer and was making steps towards going back to college to complete my four-year degree and go to Japan to teach English. However, there was a problem with my leasing agreement, it's a long story, you can uh, read my blog for more info, and I was forced to move out. I went to my best friend, Ariopolis, for help, but his parents didn't want me around to distract him, and they threatened to pull all of his graduate school funding, even if I stayed for just the night. So, I really didn't want to do that to him, because he's, he's got a really bright future ahead of him, and I didn't want to screw that up. I went up to uh, my former job, and I told my boss about what had happened, and if he knew of any kind of temporary housing that I could still live in and work in town while I looked for another place to live. 
It wouldn't have taken me very long to get the money for a new place, since payday was just days away. And even if that wasn't enough to cover me moving in, I could either take out a small loan via like a cash land or advanced America, or just wait another two weeks to get paid again. Unfortunately, I chose to move back in with my parents. I thought that I would get unemployment and I would just use that to save up and move back up there. However, I had to go through two appeals and unemployment hasn't contacted me yet about when the over the phone hearing will be. They did say that there will be a hearing though, but another letter will say when it will be held and I have yet to receive that letter. It's been 15 weeks since I moved back in with my parents and I'm flat broke. I used all of my money to move back in and to pay for my first month of rent. I'm now three months behind and my parents, my stepdad especially, are frustrated with me not paying them rent or moving out again. Since it's the end of the year, not a lot of people are hiring during this time, regardless of how the economy is doing. I've been looking all over my local area for jobs and calling them daily, as well as showing up to ask if they're hiring, and to also check in on my application. My parents then offered a solution, join the Navy. They have all kinds of benefits like paying for my education, relocating me to different places around the world, and so on. My initial reaction was, hell no. I don't want to get involved with working for the government because I don't want them monitoring me closely. I know that the government is watching all of us in some way, but as long as you don't really make a stink, nobody's gonna send a SWAT team after you. I know that I'm coming off as some kind of hippy-dippy conspiracy theorist, but I want to have some kind of privacy. There's also the grueling two months of basic training, which I heard was easier than the armies, but still pretty tough. Also, according to my cousins, who are an all-naval family, they won't actually send you to work on another base, not counting training, until you make rank, which could take up to two years. In those two years, my blogging and vlogging could become a major source of my income and allow me to live off of that alone so that I won't have to worry about finding a job once I move. With this, I could travel around the world and still make money, regardless of where I am at any given point, so long as I have internet access. On the other hand, the Navy offers a very good benefits package that could end up very well taking me to Japan like I always wanted, and giving me the best health care in the country, as well as a secure job while I'm serving and after I'm done. When you're sitting penniless like I am, surviving only on the 37 or so a month for my blog that usually goes towards gas for my car, it's a really enticing deal. After reading some of uh, Steve Pavlina's posts on making tough decisions, it seemed like continuing to blog for a living was the right choice for me. However, as I began to really think about it, was I really making the right choice? Was I deciding to reject going into the Navy out of fear, or because I'm more passionate about writing? Am I too scared to continue writing for a living because my parents might throw me out and I'd be homeless? This is the big question. How do I know if I'm making a conscious decision or an unconscious decision? I'd uh, really appreciate uh, any and all feedback from you guys. You know, if you've been in the Navy or are in the Navy, just to kind of give me an idea of what I'm getting myself into, because right now I'm just basically like educating myself, you know, learning as much as I can about, you know, how the inside of the Navy works and what you do for basic training, what comes after that you know, so on and so forth, you know, how college would be funded, you know, when does that come into play, do I have to wait two, three, four years before I can even go to college, you know, how does this all work? And I really don't want to leap into, you know, something that I'm not at least somewhat familiar with, <laughs> even though my parents and even John have been, has been trying to like super commit convince me you know join the navy join the navy you gotta join the navy you're gonna get kicked out and i don't really feel right about making like a rash decision especially something like that because you know this is the next four years of my life you know am i gonna spend the next four years of my life doing something i'm not particularly fond of or am i gonna be like working towards you know something greater even though it'll be tough you know i'll be working towards something so I'm just basically studying up as much as I can, you know, so that way I can make a more informed decision instead of just, you know, saying no and being done with it. Or saying yes and being done with it. <laughs> Even if I would, you know, happen to sign up for the Navy, from what I've heard, it could take like three to five months before I'd be uh, sent out for basic training. So, I mean, my parents are, you know, kind of treating this like, you know, I'll be gone the next day or the next week or something, and that's just not how they work. 
I think that, you know, they should just kind of calm down, let me continue looking for jobs, and uh, I probably won't find any this month, but next year is when they're going to begin hiring, you know, around the February, March time. But they also do hiring at the very beginning of the year, too, after the holidays are all done. So I might be able to get into something like that, because, you know, I got hired a lot of times, like, heck, even back in the Taco Bell days, I got hired... You know, in January, February, definitely no stranger to uh, something like that. So that's that's kind of where I am right now. And uh, like I said earlier, uh, any and all feedback is appreciated. If uh, you've been in the Navy, been there, done that, you know, I'd really like to hear, you know, advice, you know, questions I should be asking the recruiter, if I should even join in the first place. <laughs> so, yeah, this is the Andy Son signing off for now. I'll also put up a poll on uh, my website, so uh, if you just click the link in the sidebar, um, it'll send you to the poll, and uh, I'm just going to see uh, what you guys think. So, uh, this is Andy Son, signing off for now. You guys have a good night. See ya.